Welcome to the fastest 120 minutes of wrestling. And if you missed this last week, it's the World Series. What can we say? Hey, there were a lot of callers that called into the radio station and vented their frustration on not having the sound of wrestling guys. It, it was very awkward last Wednesday. Just kind of like, you know, 7 o'clock rolled around, and I'm looking at the clock going, dun 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 yeah. I didn't know what to do. It threw our whole schedule off. We didn't know what to do. <laughs> We wanted to start calling people. Sean updated the hotline like three times in a row between 7 and 9. I did. But I'll tell you what, we're back. The World Series is over, and the world of professional wrestling has not stopped, and we have a lot of information for you tonight. A load to get into, and uh, I will say this right now. Apparently, the computers are down here at the station, so we cannot receive email tonight. Um, now, we're, they're working on it, so as soon as we find out they're going to get it fixed, we will pass that along to you. But uh, during the 8 o'clock hour, we will have, as our guest tonight, Dr. Death C. Williams, who uh, a lot of people know uh, was just recently released by the World Wrestling Federation. And uh, one of my favorites, oh, you know, yeah. back in the 80s, he's got a load of ability, and he has a few things on his mind. So he's well, going to join us. You talk about nine. a guy that's had to be on a roller coaster, euphoria, and then depression. I mean, just come off a court case that he basically won. He did. And uh, then to come back and find out that, you know, you're out of a job. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, not that he won't be wrestling. He'll be wrestling somewhere, obviously, because still a talented individual. But let's face it, uh, it would be an interesting interview. And we are trying to get a hold of Al Snow. Uh, we know you know, you want to lead off with that tonight? Yeah, let's, let's lead, lead off. In case you haven't heard this, we talked about it on the hotline. And, you know, some people just have too much time on their hands. And I've got it here somewhere. Um, but... Apparently, a couple of people... Let you me have, read it. You, you want got, me to read it? You want to do it? You sure. go right ahead. Got All one. right. John Vizio, a company spokesman, and we're talking about Walmart. And if you haven't heard, Walmart has pulled the Al Snow figure off of their shelves, saying that a complaint was filed that makes light of violence against women. Anybody knows Al Snow <laughs> knows this is about as ridiculous as it comes. Uh, the complaint came from a Sabrina Parton. She's an assistant professor of communications at... Kennesaw State, wherever the hell that is, and uh, from the manager in Cartersville, could we imagine that, Cartersville, to pull SummerSlam 99 Road Rage, Al Snow, uh, because of my sons are 6 and 11, and what kind of message would this toy send them about brutalization of women? You made the greatest <laughs> statement today that you really didn't know, what was it about? I, I, said, of I said, you know what, it's about time that somebody stood up for the brutalization of mannequins, because that's a thing that's been overlooked for too long in this it has, country. And I'll tell you what, let's all jump on the bandwagon, Is because the mannequins are, it's, it's bad. Let's get serious for a second. Is this the biggest piece of bull crap you've heard? Uh, it is, and this woman obviously has no life. And she just came out of a closet and realized that there's this head running around, and it's one of the funniest gimmicks around. <laughs> and she has no clue. I mean, the head has never at once been insinuated that it's a, you know, barbaric or Al ripped a woman's head off. I mean, the idea, and WWF.com posted a response to this on their website, by the way, but the idea is that Al needs somebody to confide into, and this head is it. And like I said, it's obvious she doesn't know what she's talking about. And uh, at this juncture, we'd like to get Al on for a few minutes. Al's made some statements, and, uh, you know, basically Al said the mannequin has popular. He talks about matches where basically he's lost, and then he, <laughs> you know, he goes at it with a mannequin head. Al Snow has a great family. I mean, yeah. he has a daughter and son of his own, beautiful wife. And, I, and I'll tell you what, man, nothing farther from the truth. This is this is ridiculous, and I don't know why we but, even bring it up, but, but we the, have to. The, the gimmick and the angle has never, ever, ever, ever been about violence in any way. That's the thing. It's just somebody who saw the head in the toy package, thought it was bad, and uh, you know, and it, this is nuts. This is the stupidest thing I think I've ever heard. We've heard it all. Well, let's move. I know you got a lot. You want to move on to the day? Yeah, let's do something. A lot of people commented about uh, Monday Night on Nitro, the rating change. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but yes. it went from a TV PG to a TV 14. Now, for World Championship Wrestling to get Turner to agree to this, a representative from Turner Broadcasting Standards and Practices Division will be attending all WCW televised events, sit in on booking meetings, and approve any questionable content they may have. So, they're. Uh, you know, it kind of makes uh, WCW, I think, look bad in a way because for so long they said, hey, we are the family federation. You're never going to see that kind of, you know, for what they said, junk on our show. It's the H word. 
And now, now, when they want the ratings, by God. Go ahead. It's uh, four minutes after. Get your WCW bashing in now. It's been a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm a little bit you backed up there. You ought to be up there. You pen over. You want to get take it out on them. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the ratings went down this past week. Oh yes. Scored a three-two rating with a four-six share off of hours of three-nine, three-zero, uh, and two-nine. And then uh, Raw did a eight-eight. No, excuse me. That's wrong. Eight-eight. Wow. No, did a five-nine. I'm sorry. I knew a five-nine. You didn't see an eight-eight share, but a five-nine rating. You're so, getting confused already. Right. One week away from the mic. Yeah, you, you know, problem. it got a little bit of ring rust. Come on, I let's guess. get let's get the wrong. Each uh, rating dropped down to a zero point eight. So there you go. There. Okay. Vince Russo swears that he will not have an on-camera role in World Championship Wrestling, Good. although he may occasionally be shot from behind while sitting at a desk. Doing what? Ordering things. Picking I have no nose. idea. And it looks like that the Kiss Demon character may not be dead after all. Oh, boy. Now, the reason is WCW has to satisfy contractual agreements with the band, and but it is expected that Brian Adams will not play the role again. Well, I'm pumped to see that one. I <laughs> hope that one really hits soon. Everybody wanting to know about when the ABC 2020 segment on Les Thatcher's main event pro wrestling camp will be on the air. Right now, it is scheduled for Thursday, November the 18th. Did you hear why they moved it? I reported of why they moved it. Well, I just they, don't you call the wrestling guys I hotline. call the hotline all the time, but I'll tell you what, that, that really is an honor to, to for have it moved because of the sweeps. Well, in, in case you haven't heard, the reason they moved it was, number one, uh, ABC thought it was a strong enough segment. They wanted to air it in the middle of the November sweeps, which is the main advertising period. That's how the television stations determine their budgets for the upcoming year. So uh, that's an honor. And number two, originally they had planned it to be an eight or nine minute segment. But once they got all the footage back to ABC, they started looking at it and said, you know, we got a good 14, 15 minute piece here. We want to show it in its entirety. I think it ended up being, what, 13 minutes? 13 or 14, right. yeah. So, you know, you're going to see it all. And, and that's uh, kudos to uh, wrestling and itself and the entertainment and uh, Les Thatcher and his group and the job he does in training young wrestlers. Definitely. Terry Taylor uh, was scheduled to meet with Vince McMahon today. Now, we uh, heard from him as he was on his way from the airport to meet with Vince. And apparently he will have a decision within 48 hours. However, expect Terry to stay with the World Wrestling is that, Federation. Is that, you're going on record as saying that? Um, I'll go on record and say that, sure. Terry right, stay with the WWF. We're going to hold you to that. You do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, and we talked on the hotline quite a bit about this, that it appears that WCW right now is rehashing a lot of the past WWF storylines. We've seen Ernest the Cat Miller now with his own version of the hose <laughs> um, and so many other things. Now we're hearing rumors, rumors, mind you, that Brad Armstrong will go through a gimmick change that will either duplicate, if not exactly, be like his brother's gimmick. And, of course, his brother is the road dog, Jesse James. I'll tell you what, you know, <laughs> it, it, what can you do? I mean, there's only so many things you can do, so, you know, it's a flattery. My guess is, and, and I'm going out on a limb here, my guess is that if this, part, if this particular one happens, if Brad Armstrong becomes a version of the road dog, that this entire thing is a, somewhat of a storyline about Vince Russo bringing the WWF into WCW, and that's how Hulk Hogan will come back. That is just my gut feeling. Yeah, that's a, that's a call because if most everybody's heard, and you've reported it, you know, Hulk's not there, and uh, uh, Flair's not working c c currently, so... Uh, but they'll be back. They will no, be back. You're kidding me. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure a lot of you love this, ECW merging with Roller Jam on TNN. Man, I love Roller Jam. Do you really? That's real. The stars of uh, ECW, including Axel Rotten, Vito the Skull, Big Sal, and Little Guido, will be on the Friday, December 17th edition Don't miss it. of Roller Jam, which will be on between 9 and 11. And we did talk about it. A friend of ours is a Roller Jam player, yeah. yes. and uh, his name is Rocky. He plays for the New York team. Who is that and, match uh, between? Is, it, is New York in the match? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be the... Florida Sun Dogs, known as the All-American Team. Yeah, but against New York, and tell their, who they are. And their arch rivals, the New York Enforcers, known as the Evil Empire. And they're bad. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> they wear out some people in Roller Jam. So if you haven't been watching Roller Jam, check it out. Have you seen that other show that's on, um, kind of like a spinoff of the Gladiators, but they... Yes. Uh, what is that? I know what the name is. I'm sure one of the callers are calling. What do you call it? Call it. I'll tell you what, man. That, the old That's boys have an attitude. That's not bad. Let me put somebody in the WWF in there. You think so? Yeah, let's see what happens. 
Looks like Dr. Vince, Dev. Vince McMahon, we'll ask him if he's going to do that. Vince McMahon is looking to get into the mixed martial arts business, apparently. Yeah. Uh, former uh, King of Pancrase champion Boss Rutten was on a radio program. King of what? Pancrase. Pancrase fighting. Okay. You never heard of that? Hey, man, I'm into Kung Fu, Yung Fu, Chung Fu. Boss Rutten's a mean dude. I'll Rice tell you that right now. Boss. <laughs> Papa John. Anyway, yeah. uh, Boss tells listener, told listeners on a radio program that Vince McMahon is planning on having his own mixed martial arts group in the year 2000, complete with its own TV show, production team, and company in general. Vince's ultimate goal, apparently, is to extend the promotion into the Japanese market so he will have a vast array of merchandising products to sell in the Orient. I can't imagine that. And, and Mark the Jobber brought up one more food, Dung food. Dung food. There dung you go. Food. Uh, Unified Championship Wrestling has their next show on uh, I'm sorry, September? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> November the 20th. Uh, the uh, date on the 13th got canceled. And uh, later on today, tonight, I think, uh, we're going to have Big Daddy Raj Cox on the program. Not really representing UCW so much, but as representing Atlas Security. And uh, in case Boy, you, I'll tell you what. In case you haven't called the hotline, apparently uh, there were some problems backstage behind Hera Arena. Uh, at the ECW show on Saturday night, and a lot of people upset with Atlas Security. And uh, Big Daddy Raj Cox, of course, is a part of Atlas Security, and he will be joining us sometime tonight to uh, discuss you know, those situations. We had some people in the store today that talked about it, and I think what happened, and you know as well as I do, we've been backstage several mm -hmm. times, that has always been an area that the wrestlers come out pretty freely and wade right into the crowd and sign autographs. Well, I guess what happened, according to, uh, I, I can't remember her name, but one lady who called the hotline and left a message, she said that um, Rob Van Dam came out to start signing autographs after Atlas had told some people they had to move around to the front of the building, and apparently the Atlas security people were almost threatening the fans, saying, uh, you know, it, it won't be pretty unless you start moving. It's not going to be a pretty sight. You know, and that kind of, you know, drawing the line, because as a couple other people put it, Paul Heyman came out to sign some autographs, Rob Van Dam came out, Sandman, and all the, it seemed like the wrestlers didn't have a problem with it. Now, to defend Atlas and Hera Arena, what I heard was that, number one, there were some fans who were dis disturbing uh, ECW while they were trying to cut some interviews, and so Hera was asked to have Atlas move the people back. I also heard that there was a group of individuals, and I don't know any of them personally, but they were trying to sneak in backstage. And it was a case where you had, um, you know, two or three people ruining everybody's experience. Well, and like you said, Roger will be on, and I'm sure that happens. You know how it is. It right. gets hectic. And with the TNN tapings and that, they're trying to cut different things that they're going to be showing down the line. Uh, it's unfortunate because I'll tell you what, these guys, I've seen Rob Van Dam go out there with two and three hundred, four hundred people, right. go right into the crowd and sign until the last piece of paper was given to him. Rob enjoys that. He's just a real friendly guy. Like you said, some of the other wrestlers come out. Dayton, a, a hotbed, but you know as well as I do, ECW, uh, it, it's tough. And Atlas Security has their hands full. They travel with ECW, Raj right. does. And, uh, you know, it's it's tough to do. So. We'll listen to what Raj has to say later. Yeah, I think so. And uh, a couple other things to touch on real quick. Number one, uh, Tammy Sitch's drug test that we were talking about came back clean. However, um, there are still people that say that the drug she was taking, I shouldn't say she was taking, in case you missed a couple weeks ago, she passed out backstage after an ECW show, and um, there were some rumors that maybe she was taking some kind of drug again, but her test came back clean. But the drug apparently that she's accused of taking wouldn't show up on a drug test anyway and it's a drug designed to burn fat. Now, Tammy's defense, she says that she picked up somebody else's drink or the drink was spiked. We don't know. And uh, Paul Hamas has a little bit of an investigation going into that right now. So, uh, Also on the legal front, we're going to have him on later. Dr. Des Steve Williams last week was found totally not guilty in that paternity suit. They did a DNA test. He is not a deadbeat dad. And uh, hopefully, you know, like I said on the hotline, the same people that came out and said that uh, he's a Debbie dad, the same media outlets will also come out and say, hey, he was innocent. You're yeah, right. <laughs> They're not going to. I know that. I'll tell you what. We've had the lines lit up since before the show. Zodiac, and uh, we got somebody else on. We'll find out who it is. Let's take a quick break. Let's, Let's do a break in. Uh, we're going to be right back, Dayton. We know you missed us. We've been gone <laughs> for a week, and you're listening to The Wrestling Guys on 1410 Wing AM. Hey, welcome back, wrestling fans. You're with the Wrestling Guys and 1410 Wing AM. Give us your calls. Uh, Sean just ran out. He's talking to somebody. 
on the Celebrity Hotline. I just got off the phone with Al Snow. He is going to come on and talk about uh, what he does with a mannequin head. And I don't think his brutalizing women was on his mind. And uh, let's go to the phone lines. We've got some people that have been waiting since before the show started. Uh, Zodiac, you're with the wrestling guys. Yeah, how you doing, guys? Good, how are you? Are you? Doing pretty good, man. Good. I, w I want to start off the night by saying Roger Cox was at the ECW show, and he did a hell of a job of security. Um, it was a great show, great night for wrestling action, tons of action going on there. It was just incredible. Um, also, this Al Snow thing, man, uh, this woman needs to get a life. Come on. <laughs> that, that's totally ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? If she don't if, if she don't like the toy, she doesn't have to buy it. Nobody's breaking this girl's arm. Well, you know, it, the thing is, the allegation that she's making against Al is totally ludicrous. And the bad thing is, you know, this story is now in USA Today. It's been on CNN. And a lot of the media just go out and report the story as it is. And so Al is going to get a reputation by some people as the guy, the wrestler, who ha carries around a woman's head. In right. To people it. who don't know exactly what the hell is going on in the first place, part of my language there. No problem. But uh, you got people out there who don't understand what wrestling's all about, and they see one thing and they're like, just like totally go off in the wrong direction about it. It's just plain out ridiculous. Uh, I want to give a, the guys across the way, our uh, friends in the uh, UCW, you guys, uh, you guys have been doing some great shows, man. Keep it up, Rog, Daddy, Roger Cox, Big Bobo. You guys keep it up, man. You guys are doing a ter terrific job. Um, also, I don't know if you guys are aware of it. Um, I know in the past couple of weeks we've been talking about uh, uh, Dr. Creep. You know, he went through that quadruple bypass surgery right uh he's doing a lot better he's on his way to recovery he's doing real well Good. but while he was in the hospital uh, uh it seems to me that uh, i guess something happened to where a bunch of guys broke in the warehouse that stores all the kids kids toys for christmas and yeah they they like, got away with like what three thousand dollars oh yeah it was, it was like just horrible man and when you got guys out there who are who are breaking in warehouse stealing toys for you know helpless children man that's just that's unbelievable it's just crazy uh, so what the OCW is going to do in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, we're going to get a show gathered up, man, and uh, I want to announce this over the air. We will be having a benefit show to raise toys for the children. Uh, so uh, you guys keep listening in on the hotline. They'll to let you know when and where the show is going to be. Bring some stuff, toys, some animals, and all that stuffed animals, and bring the toy. Donate, please. It's very, you know, we really need to get them toys back up for the kids this Christmas. Definitely. All right, What's a, give out the hotline number there for OCW. Okay, the hotline number is one nine three seven two two nine eight one eight nine. All right, Zodiac, we appreciate you calling. Keep us abreast of that. We'll definitely get it on the uh, Wrestling Guys calendar of events, and uh, we'll do whatever we can to help out. Great. Also, I want to address the Millennial Man. You got this guy, uh, Millennial Man, keeps calling the hotline, saying he's wanting to take Mountain out, and he's going to do this, and he's going to do that. Well, uh, this is a personal invitation. Millennial Man, if you're listening out there, you know where we're at. Come get some. Okay. All right, man. Straight Thanks up. for calling, Thanks, Zodiac. Zodiac. All right, man. You guys take care. You too. Bye-bye. Right, I'm out of here. Things are getting a little froggy. I'll tell you <laughs> what, already. Those hotlines, there's some challenges getting tossed. By the way, if you want to call the Wrestling Guys hotline, the number is 285-0991. It's available 24 hours a day. And if you call it now and press option three, you will get the full WWF SmackDown taping result. Oh, there you go again. I hate it when you, you know, do that. It's a separate option. If you don't want to listen well, to it, now, you don't Yeah, it. but then now we can't say what I really want to talk about. We, we couldn't anyway. We don't do that. You know that. That's true. But a, lot, a lot of stuff happened last night at SmackDown Tape. Yes, it did. <laughs> Wrestling <laughs> fans. Stop. All right. Let's go to the local. All right. Let's go back. We've got, who is it? The Masked Menace. The Masked Menace. Menace, right. are you there? Yes, I am. What was that uh, hotline number again? Which one? Our, our 285 number? 285 yours. 285-0991. Okay. And, and we got the uh, daily news update, we got the calendar of events, and the SmackDown results. Now, thanks for that number. No problem. All right, well, I've got a couple of things that's been on my mind for a couple weeks, and I can't get answers for theories. It's uh, a fact that Vince McMahon doesn't like Ted Turner. Right. That's when weird. I heard that we know these that. two um, suits were going south, Vince and whatever the other guy's name is. Ed Ferrara. It made me start wondering if it's not a, a plant to, uh, for something, maybe to lower the ratings, not up them. 
I don't know whether they're going up or down. To, to uh, WCW's rating? Yeah. See, they're like a counter spy, right? <laughs> that's yeah. a possibility. I mean, look at the, some of the stuff that's going on in this wrestling world. You know, there's you a, don't know what's going on. There, there's a lot of people who speculated that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were sent down to bring down WCW. There's the same people that say that uh, Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara are the same thing. And, and I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, these two companies truly do not like each other. That's right. And I don't think there's anything in cahoots about them. If they had been in talks to do a show together or something like that, they would have done it by now. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, a storyline that's been going on. I don't know if it's a storyline or not. That's why I'm calling you. Uh, Buff Daddy has been coming out there the last two or three weeks talking about Vince and this other guy right. making him want to lay down lose and talking about these guys in the back and a couple other wrestlers have been doing it too i'm wondering is this for real or is this part of the storyline it's part of the storyline what what vince russo and ed ferrara like to do is use media outlets and the internet to further storyline so what they did is in the weeks leading up to their debut in wcw they put out rumors on the internet that they were very high on buff bagwell and he, they thought he would be the man to carry the torch. And then, if you remember the first Nitro a couple weeks ago with uh, Russo and Ferrara doing the writing, Buff came out and made references that he is now the man, haven't you been reading the internet, the guys in the back say I'm the one, and then they kind of turned on him, and you've seen in the last couple weeks with uh, you know their bodyguards, who's formerly DOA in the World Wrestling Federation, coming in and attacking people. So, um, it, it's just a big storyline. Um. Is everything I see on WCW, I watch it 90% of the time, is everything on there a storyline? With, the, with <laughs> the exception with the exception of their uh, technical glitch this past Monday with the kid cam. With did the you, what? Did you see it on... I don't, <laughs> Marty just got what I was talking about. Not, on Monday Nitro, I, you may have missed this segment, they had a, they're ripping off GTV with Billy Kidman and the kid cam. And they had... Uh, done a horrible job of taping this segment and the audio didn't match the video okay okay yeah, i saw that and they ended up still running it and you, you saw lex luger and elizabeth after the segment was over laughing and joking and yeah. then you saw the camera go down thinking they were done and you saw the production assistant going okay we're done we're out or whatever he said uh-huh that that wasn't a storyline that was a glitch and from what i heard uh some heads are about to roll in WCW about that. Well, I mean, I'm talking about in-ring storylines. I mean, every once in a while, it looks like somebody really loses their temper and knocks somebody out for real. There, this look, stuff look, does happen, doesn't it? Sure it does. There's no doubt. I mean, That's what I thought. you look at what happened with Rick Steiner and Buff Bagwell. There was some legitimate heat there. Bagwell did not want to wrestle Steiner at right. one point because he was worried that Steiner would get him. And you have uh, a lot of those types of things. They're a team. They're in a locker room. You've got a lot of egos. A lot of things happen. Sometimes guys don't want a job off. They don't want to do it. And you get in that ring and somebody hits you a little too hard or misses something and makes you look bad, you're going to get even. And they do. And I mean, anytime you step in the ring, those types of things can happen. Well, did you see Halloween Havoc? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, I'm wondering if that was a storyline about what happened with Sting there at the end. And with Hogan laying down. That is a storyline. That was supposed to be? That is a storyline. Yep. The whole thing? The whole thing. The whole deal. The whole deal. And they are playing it out. At, they're trying to do their best. They're sending out rumors. Um, and even the Dayton Daily News picked up on it this past Friday in their wrestling section that Hulk Hogan may be talking with Rupert Murdoch of Fox about starting his own wrestling federation. This is all part of a very elaborate storyline. Menace, what you got to do, buddy, is call 285-0991 every no. day, sometimes twice a day. I'll be doing that. You know, God, God bless my secretary, Stephanie. But <laughs> I, I, I told her this from day one because when she first found out about the show and liked wrestling, she was asking all these questions. If it happens on television, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a storyline. And if you want to question it, call the hotline, buddy, and we'll give you the answers. Okay. All right, man. One more thing before I go. All okay, right. Real quick. One of these days, I'm going to come down to the UCW, and I'm going to knock that Willie F. out. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be looking. We I'll have a mask on. Let me know. I'll bring you my video camera. I want to get that on. Yeah, tape. give us a heads up, will you? will know about it. All right, brother. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for calling.
By the way, uh, a couple shows around the area to talk about. Number one, UCW will be December. Or, yeah, no, November 20th. I get my dates mixed up here. A hey, week off, struggling. and I'm struggling. Jeez. Uh, what did I say? November 20th, Roger will be on. He'll yeah, he'll out. just query you. November 20th, UCW will be at the 768 Union Hall. Get more information by calling 640-1921. December 11th, the Heartland Wrestling Association returns to the Miami Valley at the Sports Town Athletic Center. And also on December 11th, the IWO looks like they're going to be running a show, and their number is 229-8185. A lot going on. We'll uh, try to get some cards, and if these things are really going to happen, we'll let you know with the wrestling guys. And uh, once again, your friend in wrestling, UCW. Who's that? Tommy Knockout. Tommy, hey. you're with the wrestling guys. Hey, guys, I want to, is this a storyline? <laughs> Everything's a storyline, Tommy. Life's a storyline. We want to know, does anybody have a real name? <laughs> Zodiac, Mass Menace, Tommy Knockout. Go ahead. I want to know, um, am I the only person that thought Tracy Smothers and Sabu was the best match at UCW? Uh, this past Saturday? Yes. I heard a lot of good compliments about that. Unfortunately, uh, I was out of town and couldn't attend, but uh, I heard a lot of good things about that match. I wonder, was it a storyline? Everything's a storyline. Well, if you see it in the <laughs> ring, it's the storyline. <laughs> I was just wanting to say, you know, you guys are doing a hell of a job. And, Thank you. You know, you guys are putting the, the footage out of the wrestling and stuff. And, you know, I heard Zodiac come on, you know, but I couldn't really understand him. You know, he was <laughs> and Dr. Creep and the warehouse and toys. That's the only thing I really understood. You know, it's a really sorry thing that happened. Yes, it is. But, you know, this is this is a wrestling a wrestling line in a wrestling sport, you know. I mean, I really feel sorry for the toys and stuff for the kids, you know. Um, well, I don't know if Rod just want to do anything, you know, to try to help them out. But. Well, the thing, the thing is, Tommy. Number one, I mean, yeah, Doctor Creep, uh, you know, is, is a local icon, really, oh. and he has been associated with uh, wrestling in the past in the Miami Valley. He's been a longtime supporter of professional wrestling, and so, and I don't think a lot of people know that, so. I think people say, well, why are you talking about Dr. Creep all the time? Well, he has been a supporter of wrestling in this area for a long, long time. And I think that if uh, OCW or UCW or whoever puts together a show and can tie it in to help out uh, Operation Smiles and the various organizations, I think it does a lot to prove um, the good in wrestling because a lot of people that don't follow the sport only want to point out the bad. Definitely, definitely. So, mm -hmm. if, 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 you know, if we can take, you know, two or three minutes to talk about Dr. Creep and maybe, you know, plug a show that's going to help out some kids, I think it's, it's well worth our time to do so. Oh, certainly. And I can tell you something else. We are looking at doing something really special in right. the Miami Valley. Uh, we're not under liberty to say right now, but we're looking at doing something with a lot of the independent wrestlers, uh, UCW, obviously you, Tommy, and your group, and uh, some of the other independents, and uh, you should be hearing about that real soon. That's great. You know, I, I'll, I will put my best effort into helping it out, you know, because, I mean, I am a father myself of a little girl. And, you know, God, perhaps, you know, if something like that happened, right. you know, and there was no way of, you know, putting toys, you know, then you got a person like Dr. Creep that is willing, you know, to go past his line of duty to help, you know, and something like that happens. That, I mean, it's, it's really terrible. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And, I mean, I think everyone that listens to this show, you know, ought to really come out, you know, and just lay it down and help them out. And that's what we're hoping to do, and we uh, will be passing on information about that. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's great. Hey, but, Tommy, we got, got something else real quick? Yes, the subject I wanted to call and talk about was November the 20th. Um, you know, Raj and everyone, you know, went out of their way to give, you know, the Dayton fans tickets and stuff to ECW. And, you know, you have thousands of people show up to get these tickets. You know, we're waiting. Are these thousands of people coming to get these tickets? going to come out of their pockets and spend 10 bucks to come see us? Well, I mean, hopefully they will. Um, and, you know, I know Raj made that point on uh, the UCW hotline, I think either yesterday or today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hope they do. Um, it was a very cool thing what UCW did. I think they gave away in the neighborhood of like 500 some tickets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it would be very nice because I believe the tickets for the 768 are about 10 bucks or 7 bucks or something like that. Not very expensive at all. Uh -huh. And I think uh, people need to support wrestling in the Miami Valley. And whether you want to go see, you know, UCW, HWA, whoever, you need to support the guys in this area, I think, uh, UCW especially. I think that if you got a ticket, a free ticket from Raj and the guys, you owe to go out and support them for that show. Oh, exactly. I mean, all the Dayton fat hillbillies, you know, can put them oh! in the Cokes for a second. Yeah. Come up for $10 and buy a damn ticket. Tommy, you're not going to win over any fans that way. <laughs> no, I don't care about fans. <laughs> I am TKO. 
Mario. I ain't been aiming to put the asses in the seats, and that's all that matters. That's what. All right. Take care, man. Have all right, one. Tommy. Bye bye. I'll tell you what. You heard a TKO Tommy knockout, and here we go for another break. It's going fast and furious for the first 30 minutes. And when we come back, we will have, once again, the THQ trivia question of the week. And I'll tell you what, another caller, The Undertaker, is waiting on the line. Mark Heller? I, I don't know. It says... It says The Undertaker? It says The Undertaker. That's not true. All right. Hey, you're listening to The Wrestling Guys on 1410 Wing AM. Get your calls in. with the World Series was on. Who cared if the Yankees won? That should be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Van Dam. Say it. Rob Van Dam. You ready for the trivia question? Go for it. Let's go right into the THQ trivia question of the week. Now, of course, THQ makers of WrestleMania 2000 coming out December 19th on your Nintendo 64. And this game is getting rave reviews. Pictures of it right now. Fan magazine is calling it the most electrifying wrestling game the world has ever seen. Electrifying. The, the Nintendo calls it the biggest, meanest, fattest, coolest, raddest wrestling game. What do you think Nintendo is going to call it? Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> it's being called the game of the century. So if you are a wrestling fan, the uh, president of Nintendo calls it the game of the century. <laughs> anyway, looks very, very cool. Including the guy are in the game. So look impressive. I know Marty's over here. I want a Nintendo. Yes, I tried to call him. I said, what game do we have? You know, which one? He's like, I don't know. Rob, what game do we have? Uh, he bought his girlfriend. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, the 19th, the game comes out. So contact your local video game outlet. Software, etc. Take them off. Yes. You can go there and reserve your copy of WrestleMania 2000 for the now we have the THQ trivia question of the week. And we've got uh, Jobber, drum roll. Jobber, are you there? <laughs> That's a rim shot. Drum roll. Okay. Two drum rolls. Okay. Anyway, close as we get with them. Anyway, we've got a couple of jackets to, to give away for you. THQ and tonight is at which WrestleMania John Michael make his WrestleMania debut? WrestleMania questions. WrestleMania questions are great. W-I-N-G, when you call in tonight, you're just your, and if you're the correct caller, you get the jack and a couple weeks ago, THQ on the program, you may get a couple of copies of hey. to give away. Oh, hey. it's not the rest of yeah. the give us stuff away. Yeah. Well, let's go, to the, we got a couple guys that could have already. Let's take the first caller, The Undertaker. Okay. Oh, this is The Undertaker. The Undertaker guy. Oh, The Undertaker guy. Because he's here and he's You know what? If we'd have took your call before the break, you'd have never had a Before I had to quit to make a comment about certain people. Uh, don't get too personal, but okay. Uh, I think the rat, bomb, love man, crazy man, I love that man for name is Jack, so I can't say the rest of it. Okay. And I want to challenge a little punk to a bench press contest on the radio show next week. Uh, now we don't have the equipment here for a bit. If you want to go out to a gym or something, do it and let us know who wins. Anyways, God. Well, another problem. Undertaker guy, what's your... Come on, what's your question? Okay, what? What's the storyline between Kane and Toy that they could bring the Undertaker? The Undertaker is coming back, probably after the Survivor Series, but I think he's brought into that storyline. Uh, I think I don't know if they'll do that, but uh, I don't know called in on the hotline and left an opinion. I thought it was very cool. Between Kane and Tori, which I think would be a very good uh, way to take that game. Yeah, well, I have a truth commission. The truth commission. What happened to them? I think it was just a storyline that died out. You get something, it's going to work, and then really nobody pops for it. Mm -hmm. 
by the wayside. Federations do enough to Make the type of money back with your papers. And what we got to do is all work together to try to put people in them and spend in the area. And I that, think by working together, that. that sounds good to me. And one other quick thing. Uh, uh, what, what was it? The Undertaker was talking about? Well, the Undertaker guy. The Undertaker guy. Yeah. Okay, props to you. And he's talking about uh, bench press. That is, that's my thing. That's my part. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I, I don't think he was challenging you for Maybe you can referee this thing. Yeah, right up my alley. Well, Jack, I'll tell you what, stay uh, We may be doing something. We're talking about something down the line here. And uh, sometimes we'll find extracurricular activities at one of these shows that we're looking at. That may be it, and you can be right in the middle of it. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling. Hey, thank you. Thanks, right. Jack. Hey, let's go to uh, Big Daddy Raj Cox. To the celebrity hotline. It's there, man. It's lit up. You gave him the back door number. I told you I didn't give him the back door number.
down here in Dayton, Ohio, or, you know, further down the East Coast where we're more friendlier. The guys from New York are a little more stern. You see what I'm saying? So our job is Serena calls in and they tell us what they exactly want. And that's no fan around the back. You know what I mean? Right. They want to protect the wrestlers because, you know, it takes a lot of money to do the insurance claims. You know what I mean? Sure. So they want us to clear the out so that's no confrontation between the fans and the wrestlers. Me and Bull Boy is different because, like I said, we, you know, we the show where these guys might not care as much because they from the city, city and they don't really know anybody. You know what I mean? So they take it upon themselves. And, you know, if people don't listen, you know, you have people that go away and they come right back when these guys get a little more ticked off, you know? So it takes more time for them to say something. They might get a, a, a tougher demeanor, you know, to keep people out. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you know, these guys are here to do a job just like everybody else, you know? Security company, and you're to keep the fans away from rock and concert, uh, you know, concert or something. Then you got to do your, your best thing at getting the people away from there. You can lose your right. Well, that's how these guys take it. Well, what we were told was that, uh, and they never said specifically who it was. Right. But I heard a couple things. Number one, I guess there was a group of fans that had a little bit too much to drink that were trying to sneak backstage. Right. And that, that kind of ruined it for everybody. Right. And I guess what the situation was. the fans they had to leave, even though the wrestlers were out there signing autographs. Right. Some of the people that called our hotline complaining said that um, the way that the Atlas security people handled themselves, that they were almost kind of threatening the fans that they didn't leave, things weren't going to get us. Right. And, you know, before I joined up for Atlas, they had a little guy on the, on the Atlas team, and when I first was working here in security, there were people pointing laser lights and stuff. Like I said, these guys, you know, New York's a and they feel like, you know, a laser pointer could be a gun or anything with the way, you know, the crime in New York is. And what you point is can uh, damage their, and your eyes, too. Which right. Is right. So these guys, like I say, you know, they, they take a tougher demeanor because, like I said, if you ever go to New York, everybody down there is tough. That's women, men, everybody. And, 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 you know, these guys are just trying to do the job. And, I mean, if fans don't listen to them, I mean, you know, the wrestler comes down and it's hard on us. Right. You see what I'm saying? The wrestler really ruined it for us because we can clear the parking lot out and as soon as they see Rob and Sam come out, they're rushing right back. And Rob says, well, let them sign autographs. Then you got 500 other people. You know what I'm saying? And in, in, in defense of you guys, Rob's not paying your paycheck, Hera did. That's right. He was not even Hera. Uh, you know, we're through Atlas, which is paid through Paulie Dangerously himself. Right. So these, you know, everything that comes down comes from Paulie and Hera. So we have to abide by different rules. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So that's, I mean, you know, like I said, it's just politics on, you know, who's the toughest, they got to prove a point to the fans, the, pr the fans are trying to prove a point, you know, we don't have to go, we pay good money, and a lot of them have a you know, legitimate beef, you pay 50 bucks for a front row seat, you at least want an autograph, right, you know, and that's why, you know, most of the guys at UCW, we think time not to have these type things, but easy to all these guys, they really don't have the time because they usually have to make it to the next town, you know, we obviously know the emotions run high, or sport, whatever you want to call it. Right. And it's a tough job, man. I've been there, and you know how it is, too. Obviously, you work it. And then a lot of times, it gets a lot more than even back there. Man. Right. You've been in the middle of it where the people have been attacked and the guys that travel with that all the time, and you have been, for most recently, right. have been in situations that have turned real ugly oh, yeah, very fast. I mean, I've, been, I've been in some stuff where, I mean, we have actually had to fight in fact, like, like I said, people get mad. You pay 50 bucks, you can't get an autograph, and you've been had a lot of beer here in beer during these events. You know, you're going to get some hostile people. Exactly. Right. You know? And, and, and for those of you listening, we're not condoning that, that some of the guards are maybe something said something, or maybe went a little over the right. We're just trying to give everybody a perspective. Right. On, 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 on. Yeah, why their mentality is the way it is, too. And you get a Raj. Uh, and Bo, who work there, they're, you know, very familiar. You know, people, you know, they can handle people differently. Right. A lot of these guys are more of a physical confrontation situation. And yeah. That's the way they address it. You know, the Atlas guys are uh, right. That's wrong. Not at all. But it's not just Atlas. If you ever, if you were ever at the show and Doug Dillon was there, oh, Dillon is a real star. Yes, he is. And John, same goes with the WWF. Right. Yeah. 
takes care of the whole crowd. And, you know, and it's intimidation. This guy gives you a bad look. You ain't going to do nothing. Right. See, so that's the same thing we have to do. Me and Bo try to take it a different way along with Sam. You know, we try to talk to fans and we try to have a good time. Like, I walked in the arena, people knew me, so they cared for me. And a lot of people love Atlas. And there's Atlas people dressed up like Atlas, <laughs> you know. But I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, we do our job, and, and the fans have to understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're we're trying to keep them safe. You know, people are late to get upset when we take them from them. You know, people get get mad because they throw stuff. But we're not only protecting the wrestlers, we're protecting the fans as well. Hey, Rod, we got to give a break real quick. UCW has a show coming up November 20th, right? That's right. And I want to talk about Tommy Knockout real quick. He's going to get a U.S. title shot against Moondog. Ooh. Against two, Moon Dog. He is the North American champion. He's the North American champion, and Tommy Knockout's been fighting a long time. And uh, matter of fact, Tommy held the title last year for uh, Middletown. I thought the two of those guys were friends. Hey, anything can happen. There you go. And of course, the UCW number six four zero nineteen twenty one. Rod, we got to go to a break. Rod, if you're still listening, I'll be in touch with you a little later. And All thanks right. for coming on. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about, and we're gonna. Go to a break, though. Keep listening to the wrestling guys on 1410 Wing AM. It's uh, John Tickham. What? Hey, 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 hey. We'll be right back, Dave. Hey, first, 1410 WING. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tommy Dreamer. Are you No, I'm Tommy. Uh, the only thing I yeah, like about Tommy right Dreamer. I'll smack you. The only thing I like about Tommy Dreamer. Well, welcome back to the Wrestling Guys. Uh, we're going to bring you on the Celebrity Hotline, uh, Mr. Al Snow, in a few minutes. Al, are you with us yet? I am here. I'm the most controversial man in the United You States. are. You 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 are. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. But did this whole thing... Congratulations, by the way. Uh, did, this, did this whole thing with Walmart come out of left field? Uh, basically out of left field. I, in fact, I think it was out of the northern field. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> way down south. Beyond Dixie. Oh, uh, gee. Okay, you know, it was really one of the headline stories that we had today. And it was a what? headline story all over the United States. Oh, USA Today, CNN, yep. CBS. Uh, yeah. Ridiculous. Woman, when we were talking about this woman, an assistant professor of communications at Kennesaw State University. This goes to prove that the more learned you are, does not make you that much wiser. Oh, my <laughs> God. If it ever was an epidemic, I mean, unbelievable. When you first heard this, did you think it was funny? No, actually, what had happened was uh, my mother had called me while I was staying in Denny's in Philadelphia eating yesterday morning uh, to tell me that, you know, they heard that I was on the news and, uh, you know, I thought, oh, my God, you know, another one. <laughs> <laughs> and what yeah. kind of expression did she have, Al? I don't know. Yeah, that's all I Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, and I told me that they were going to carry my doll in Walmart, and it didn't go in really did anything, and I thought, well, it's just, you know, local because I'm, you know, I'm so, that's why, you know, having it on the air. Yeah. But then Bob Holly told me his wife had, because she had seen the tail end of the CNN thing and was my name and I carried a mannequin head and, and was wondering if something had happened to me that I got in an accident. Now, it, the, the action package question actually has Hardcore Holly in the package with it, right? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. And uh, I used his spouse, but he certainly abused me. And, abused <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, uh, I, I didn't realize it until we were doing it working out the gym and they had the TV. And in all three, all ABC, NBC, and CBS, the New York News, um, the top three stories for the day were the mayoral race there in Philadelphia, the Egypt air crash, and me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what a way to break it. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I, you know, I usually, uh, I'm used to the news story, but that's when, you know, we're out on the field with the trunk of a car, and girl I'm back, and it's sick, but, uh, you know, I really don't want to. I, I, I don't blame you. I don't think it's an appropriate time to bring that on this show. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but has anybody, I mean, kind of have the same take on it? 
a crazy judge. No idea what the hell she's talking about. There are actual people now that are saying, no, he's the one who brutalizes women, which we know is not the case. Well, to my knowledge, I, you know, I don't think there's anybody yet that has you know, sort of begun to say that you know, he's the one that brutalizes women. I think the whole situation is pretty absurd. You know, I read an actual quote from the article that this woman or both these women had written was that by including the uh, the dismembered head, as she called it, uh, female head in there in the package, uh, was a training manual for future spousal abusers. <laughs> now, uh, my opinion on that is that if your child grows up to be a spousal abuser, it's probably because mom and dad are beating because they see my doll. Let's say right now, number one, you're not a domestic Not at all. I think it's a tragic situation, and I think that, I think that uh, unfortunately for this woman and for many people in the United States today, they all look for a scapegoat. They all look for some excuse. They all look for some way or somebody to blame society's ills on instead of taking the personal responsibility for these actions that they take, you know, they take on themselves. Um, you know, instead of sitting there and saying, well, the reason that, you know, spousal abuse exists is because there are some people out there that are, you know, that, that react violently and react poorly in, in certain situations and, and uh, should seek treatment. And basically it's their problem, not, you know, saying, oh, it's because of TV or because of this doll. It's, that's absurd. That is completely absurd. Is, um, is this the first time you've ever had complaints about the head in this fashion? Um... Yeah, the, no, this is not the first time. Uh, one time at a college in ECW, um, there was a promotional fi picture where I was holding the head in a, a fashion where I had my hands around the bottom of the base where it looked like I was you know, choking it, but it wasn't even the intent. Yeah. And uh, some, uh, I believe it was a woman's group, had uh, wanted to picket the show that night because they believed that, you know, that also glorified violence to women. I remember uh, you were you wrestled a show uh, for us here in Middletown back in July. And the Middletown Journal, the local paper, has a little column where people can call in and sound off on things. And they had ran a picture of you, a promotional picture, I think probably the same one. And she had actually asked, was that a real human head that Al was carrying with him? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I just stopped by someplace. She at a also wanted front. to know where Captain Picard was. Yeah. Because he was supposed to have landed there the week before. Yeah, with the entire baby, crew. Scotty. Yeah, Lord. So was, uh, I, I want whatever medication they've got her on. <laughs> I'll tell you, buddy. You know, what really bothers me is, is that I never have ever, ever, ever referred to that mannequin head in any sexual fashion whatsoever. I always refer to it in an asexual fashion, and that is as a they or a them, never as a he or a she. I never refer to it as a male or a female of any sort. I always refer to it as a multiple personality, <laughs> and never once have I ever referred to it as a she. And so... You know, it amazes me that they then consider that a spousal abuse. Yeah, are all mannequin heads women? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I do have a male mannequin I'm head. just starting thinking about this. <laughs> now, the white styrofoam ones, are those men or women? Uh, I think those are unisex. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. So we're going to have to have a talk with this woman. Oh, wait a minute, you know, hey, if you're really you know, lonely, they could be any sex. <laughs> you know who we really need to verify all this, so where's Pam? <laughs> well, Put well, Pam yeah, on. I, I've got her locked up. <laughs> No, no, let her out because we want to ask her. We want to go on record from your wife uh, that you are not an abuser. All right. Just, and don't hold a gun to her head. That's okay? right. Let her speak freely. Okay, I'll I'll first have to pull the tape off her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, have her recover from the heavy dosages of cough syrup. Uh, of course. Keep her quiet. Of course, we understand. Well, you know. You've got to do what you got to do. You got to prove that you're the man. You are now. feeding her, right? What's that? You are feeding her, right? Not right now at the present Well, you time. know he's on the road a lot, so he's <laughs> got to take control when he gets home. <laughs> uh, the, Marty and the, uh, the, the the wrestling guys want to confirm that I don't strike you. Hold on. Right. <laughs> Pam, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Pam. Uh, it's Sean and Marty with the wrestling guys. We were talking about this whole uh, ludicrous story with Al and the Walmart situation. Yeah. For the record. Yes, for the record, Pam. And this goes out all over the country over the World Wide Web on wingam.com. Uh -huh. And you can bet it's going to hit the Internet. We've got you on, and we know, but we want to hear it from you, because this lady, Sabrina Parton, really thinks that there's something going on with Al. What kind of message is Al sending? What kind of message is Al sending home? Uh... <laughs> 
Did, did he pull all the tape up? <laughs> I mean, obviously, Pam, we, we, I mean, we talked about the family. I mean, you guys got a beautiful family, great kids. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you go to any of the wrestling matches in the area or any of the appearances, you guys are always there. And, uh, you know, you got to think this is almost crazy, too. And I know the people of Lima, Ohio do. Uh, it's, I think it's very silly. I think it's, uh, in a way, I think it's sort of funny that people take things so literally and so seriously. Um, you know, they, sh they need to get a life, <laughs> <laughs> basically. But, no, Al is a very loving, very sweet husband. He would not hit me, well, unless I hit him first. I was going to say, if he ever hit you, I think you're going to hit him back. <laughs> Oh, does, does playing the uh, uh, bug slug count? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I think you're safe with bug slug. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Then, then, then we're covered. Okay. okay. That's the only time he hits me. <laughs> bug well, well, Pam, thank you very much. Pam, only I got one question. Are you treating Jacob better? <laughs> 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 That's a little inside, though. <laughs> uh, I'm trying. <laughs> All right. I, now that I gotta check on. I gotta check on my buddy Jacob. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty cool. All right. Okay. All right, Pam. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs> Did, Al, you still there or did you yeah. hang up on us? Uh, no, no, no. All right, well, we have to verify that. Yeah. Because, Al, we know there's a lot of people listening in from the World Wide Web. Yeah, and hold on now. I want to make sure everybody understands. I do, again, I do not make light of any kind of form of, of, of any sort of abuse. Right. Of any side. No, mean, and we not, said that early on. I mean, Al, you know, I consider you to be a good friend, and Sean does. And none of us do. I mean, that's it's no, a tragedy, and anybody. But, the, the, you, but you have to laugh about the complete ridiculousness of this woman's opinion, not not about the actual, you know, seriousness of the situation. Yeah, not a, not a her opinion about spousal abuse or you know abuse of ladies or women, right. just the tie in with with you and and your skit, which. You know, the uh, Jim Byrne, WWF vice president for marketing, defended the Dow very well by saying, you know, it's ridiculous. This thing is, it's your act. It's silly. It's lots of fun. You know, it's just it's something to enjoy, not to not to tie in with something that dramatic. And, and you know, we all hope that, you know, that anybody thinks that, let's put it out of their minds because that's definitely not the case. And if she, if she understood exactly who and what the, the personality is that I display in and, and, and true abnormal psychology terms. It is a, uh, a person who has a paranoid schizophrenic uh, with a p multiple personality disorder with uh, transference syndrome, which means that I transfer the multiple personality syndrome onto the head. That's deep. Well, Very deep. I actually read a book, at, you know, to, to, for the symptoms. Mick Foley's? No, yeah, <laughs> Mick Foley's. Hey, Al, look at it this way. You now are part of a collector's item, which you can probably pick up on eBay tonight for about 200 bucks. <laughs> no doubt, man. The, the price on those things is skyrocketed. No. Yes, and you're, uh, if you have some playing around, you can put them on eBay and uh, fund Jacob's college education. Hey, that or I can just throw it in the fireplace and keep my house. <laughs> there you go. There you Al, go. we know it's your day off. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I know you won't let this bother you in the slightest. Uh, not at all. I think it's fantastic. I, I am now a national news event. Uh, Wolf Blitzer and Peter Arnett were riding around the car with me. Well, I am bigger <laughs> than the Gulf War. Well, let's face they it. They had ongoing coverage of me just walking around. <laughs> I plan on doing a single-man picket line of, uh, of Walmart in Benville, Arkansas. <laughs> no, no, we want snow. Or I don't care what you said. Hey, Sam, give me a little head. <laughs> Or uh, one, two, three, I want me. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, buddy. I think we... I can start a grassroots movement. I like it. There we go. I hey, mean, buddy. I think the demand for head is definitely out there. I think Walmart, a store that prides itself on the American way and giving the consumer what it wants, tell me what consumer doesn't want a little head. I can't think of any. None. None. No. We are looking at a gold mine. I'm talking Home Shopping Network, QVC. <laughs> Screw Walmart. I'm moving on to cable. <laughs> well, Al, and Chase, uh, we, again, we don't want to spoil it, but anybody who's a fan of yours uh, needs to definitely watch SmackDown tomorrow night. Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, That's it. Move. The controversy continues. Yes, it does. And uh, once again, you've been listening to The Man, The Myth. And now the controversial legend. Yes. And soon to be. Can't say it. Don't, don't do it. Don't say it.
Okay. Don't ruin it for We know it, but congratulations. You're, but you're the man, baby. You are the man. You're the man. I am happening. Wolf Blitzer, put that down. <laughs> Don't touch the... Hey, leave that alone. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Again, Al, tell me <laughs> I'll tell, I'll tell them a lot of stuff, especially with the old five knuckle cross. Hey, hey, hey! hey. All right, All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Bye, right. bye. Oh my God! Uh, dude. I'll tell you what we got. What's that? Seven, ten. Yeah. They've been lost. They are all over the Miami Valley, and they can't find the wing yeah, radio I don't, station. I don't think we can blame Dana for this one. No, but I mean, once again, Dana. I'm not blaming any individuals. I'm blaming somebody that has a job, a responsible job, of delivering pizza <laughs> and is struggling <laughs> with their sense of direction. And, and maybe if you're out there, get a seeing eye dog. Get some help. Call us. You know, we'll not, help you. I'm not having a slice of that pizza now. They're going to put something on there. It's going to be nasty. Oh, my <laughs> God. What does it take? I tell you what. Let's take a break right now. Jobber, are you there? Right now? Let's, do, let's take oh, a break. Oh, nice, Jobber. On Thank the button, you. He's man. on the button. When we come back, we've got another guy on the Celebrity Hotline, Dr. Death Steve Williams. Woo! Hey, you're listening to the Wrestling Guys on 1410 Wing AM. The lines are lit up, and we're going to take your calls at 457 Wing, and we'll be right back, Dayton. Friend Dave Sear from OneWrestling.com and also ECWWrestling.com and WOW Magazine. So nice to have you. what, Dave, Dave Shear is all over. If you're into wrestling, you know who Dave Shear is. Yes, you do. Didn't you just call him? I uh, talked to him earlier today, yes. Yes, you did. Anyway, welcome back to the Wrestling Guys. you got Sean Siddham along with Marty Adams and taking your phone calls at 457-WING. And I know we've got a couple people. He stands for excellence and Colin from Beaver Creek. We know you're holding, but this man, the celebrity hotline is lit up. And nobody is going to take a back seat to the man himself, Dr. And, Death. And if you try to get in his way, I think he's got a back suplex ready for you. Yes, he does. Doc, how are you? Great. The Dr. Bomb, the Oklahoma <laughs> Stampede, Boomer Sooner guys. What's up? How's it going? It's going fantastic. You know, you got to feel a little good. I mean, the last couple months really have been kind of rough, but I think you've been vindicated. Hi, older brother. Not just two months, man. It's been going on for a while now. We've been asking. I guess you're talking about uh, a few things. Let's start with the deadbeat dad case. Exactly. Hey, how does a man have to prove himself innocent with a lot of money, brother? Let me tell you. <laughs> I've got lawyers working for me left and right just because uh, um, one girl, Rita Rat or a groupie, hey, God bless her too, but you don't have to point their finger at, uh, you know, somebody and say you're the dad. Now, let's give some people some background on this. She went and actually got a conviction against you for being a deadbeat dad, and you had never even knew anything about this because you were in Japan, right? Bottom line, let me tell you the whole situation. I know the papers write what they want, the news, whatever, but here's what happened. This has been going on for a while. For the last two years, I've asked for a DNA test. Before that, she got a default judgment against me because they served papers to me while I was in Japan. So it was improper serving. So we came back with uh, asking for a DNA, but uh, they had the default judgment. They weren't going to give the DNA. Now, how does uh, America, USA, go with that kind of uh, law? I don't know, man, but the DNA uh, prevailed, uh, and I'm not the dad. Well, and obviously, we were talking about this earlier in the show, Doc. Um, it had to, you've been on a roller coaster here. I mean, it had to be a euphoria. Not, I mean, obviously, you knew, but, you know, just being vindicated because, you know, you had been branded, and everybody always jumps on the bandwagon when something's wrong. Big time, as we all know, our great Bill Clinton passed that uh, that uh, law a couple years ago to get the deadbeat dads. Well, Sacramento U.S. District Attorney and the feds have all the money in the world to come point their finger at anybody and try to nab them. Well, so right now, I'll tell you where the situation's at. It's not ended yet. Oh, really? Oh, the feds are pulling the strings because they got eggs thrown in their face. And uh, they're asking for another DNA test. Oh, jeez. 
Can you believe that? Unbelievable. And, and the first DNA test said that you were like, what, one in 15 billion of a chance that you were the dad or whatever? Zero. 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 Unbelievable. Zero. But they're coming back and they're, they're even asking for a lower test than the one we took. And uh, I just told my lawyers today, uh, I'm innocent until proven guilty. So we're going back with the same test we just did, the old swab test in the mouth. And you know what's great is the mar we had a marshal watch this happen. They took a picture, and I even got my fingerprints done when this uh, DNA test was done. But, you know, like I said, our good President Bill Clinton passed that uh, bill, so they have all the money they in the world to come. Because uh, at bottom line, they got eggs thrown in their face, and they went out and shot it off on the Internet and the Associated Press. I mean, it hit Tokyo. Well, you know, let's say that there are, you know, guys out there who are deadbeat oh, yeah. dads and they need they, they do need to be taken care of right. but bottom line is you're not one of them i'm not the deadbeat dad <laughs> i'm a great dad brother let me tell you i got two kids kids and that one's in college and one's seven years old man i'm, I'm hey i'll tell you bottom line guys God is good, and God is good all the time, brother. Yes, sir. And Steve, line. Steve, let's talk about uh, the, you in the world of wrestling. And you really had a wild career, of course. Uh, you started out in Mid-South, and I think that's when people really started to know who you were. Best wrestling alliance there ever was. Mid-South sports. Let, let me ask you something, and, you know, I don't know how many of our fans remember the Mid-South and as it progressed into being the UWF, but if you talk to people who were around and who watched it, um, so many people feel that that was absolutely the best wrestling federation they have ever seen. And you had guys come out of there, uh, yourself, of course, Ted DiBiase, Terry Taylor, the Freebirds. Hacksaw. Uh, Hacksaw Duggan. Sting came Reed. out of there. Eddie Gilbert. Ernie Ladd. Yeah, exactly. King Kong Bundy. Junkyard Dog. One Man Gang. Come on, man. We can hit them all, brother. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. Man. I'll tell you what all those guys were. They are the legends, and I'll tell you what, they're the ones who made pro wrestling for all these whippersnappers out there right now trying to become pro wrestlers. Well, you know, and what was it like being around that atmosphere, and why do you think it didn't really succeed? Well, I think because it went bigger than Bill Watts, Bill Watts figured it would get that big. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. we had a great territory here in Mid-South. Well, all of a sudden, it started blooming, man, and, uh, you know, we started going to Chicago, California, and it got a little bit bigger than Bill Watts really wanted it to be, and money-wise, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He is making a ton of money here in the Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Texas, Oklahoma territory, you know? But I think, I think it got really big, and Bill... God bless him, man. I don't agree on everything he does, but he has a big ego, and he wanted all for himself. Now, Steve, who in this business doesn't have a big ego? Come on. <laughs> I'll tell you what, brother. I don't have the big ego. I'll tell you what. I've, I've been down the road so many times and seen so much of this BS going on. If the boys would realize that well, we got to make money for each other because the promoters ain't going to make it for us, they're going to take it all. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. It's just... I, you know, we're sitting here, and once again, we're talking about what's going on. W you know, the Internet rumors have you now that you've been released. Is that official? I, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> I've done LinkedIn on twice now here. I'm a, not the deadbeat dad, and I've been released from WWF. Hey, I don't have much to say about them, but God bless them. Hey, I'll tell you what, Vince is, uh, he's pushing the envelope, and uh, we'll see them uh, in the future. Hey, Steve, let's go back and talk just briefly about the WWF. You came in, and you suffered the injury at Brawl for All, and that really was kind of what set you back, right? Well, yeah. And, but, uh, but since then, I mean, you have lost weight, you've rehabbed, you're in better shape than you've ever been. Bottom line is I tore my hamstring in uh, two, dis uh, two positions. One was my lower uh, button on, right in the middle of uh, your bicep muscle in your hamstring. Well... The, the the agents from WWF and my good old friend JR <coughs> uh, he they were all for me and said hey take all the time you want to rehab. Get your leg right, get the hundred and ten percent. I said, Hey, I know how to do that. Uh, that's what I've done all my life is I've been on the top of the game, you know, since I started, you know? Right. So 
I did whatever I could, and then all of a sudden they called me up and said, hey, we need you back in one month. This is like four, five months later. Now, if, if any athlete or any doctor or any, uh, you know, sports medicine guy out there listening, we all know that a torn muscle, especially in your hamstring, doesn't come back six to a year, six months to a year. That's what they're figuring. Okay. And maybe not even come back at all. Uh, as long as I know it's a... Uh, I've got a tear. I'm having two tears in my uh, in my butt, and my uh, my thigh, and I'm going to have that for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not 110 percent. The way I feel right now, I am 110. But bottom line is, they brought me back, and uh, here they put put Jim Ross. I, he had uh, some problems with his family, and then problems with uh, facial uh, deal there. And, the Bell palsy. Yeah, and God bless him, man. I hope everything works out for him. But uh, he just he got me out there, and really what I was is a stepping stone to get him back on TV. And, you know, and they had a lot of things planned for you, it looked what? like, because looking at the merchandising that they were doing, you were on everything. You were an action figure, you were in the video games, but then, you know, for whatever reason, we just didn't see you on Monday night. I'll tell you what I was promised from uh, good old JR. Six months after I got back in there, I was going to have a run with uh, Cold, uh, Stone Cold. Really? Steve Williams. The other Steve Williams. <laughs> for, for those of us, those who don't know, not the real Steve Williams. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's real name is Steve Williams. Yes, it is. And actually, you were the reason that he couldn't have his real name in the world of wrestling. Tell the story. He, Tell uh, the story, man. They, they all need to know that story. He was in. He uh, came out of Chris Adams School at, down in Texas, and he originally was going to be known as Steve Williams. But then you were, of course, uh, making the rounds in Mid South and. Uh, your name was out there, and they told him, hey, there's already a Steve Williams. You can't be it. Exactly. But, hey, hey, he's a great, let me tell you, he's a great person. Stone Cold's great. But let me get back to the story. As you see, the story is uh, what they did with Hunter. Yeah. With J.R. The where, whole, the whole storyline was promised for me. Where you would be the one that would attack J.R. Yeah, I was going to turn out to be the big heel. Dude. I'd turn on J.R. and then have the run with Stone Cold and... You know, et cetera, et cetera. But hey, <clears throat> bottom line, one man doesn't like me, and uh, that's fine with me. I, you know, hey, one man ain't gonna control my life. Gotcha. You know, right now, I'm a free man, and I'm the happiest man. I got the good Lord behind me, and I'm just—I'll tell you what. This the Bible says the man can move mountains. Well, I've been hit in every area of my life in the last—I'd say. Last seven, eight months, and I, right now, I'm moving mountains, brother. There you go. Hey, Steve, one thing about your career, you've always been a huge success over in Japan, whether it be with uh, Stan Hansen, Terry Gordy, what have you. Can you talk about what the wrestling scene is like in Japan from an American point of view? Well, what, what the Americans are experiencing right now is what J Japan experienced for probably the last... Uh, Oh, before last year, about 10 years of it, because that's where I was for the last 10 years. I was over there, and it was rocking. I mean, as you see the people outside of the stadiums before the buses get there, I mean, before the boys get there, or when we're leaving, it was packed. And, I mean, there were sold-out coliseums. The Budokan was for sure sold out for the whole year. Wow. Not just, and they didn't even know who was on the card. That's what's unbelievable. They just knew wrestling was there, and they wanted to see it. It was that's rabid. It. And it was, you know, $200 seats, Jeez. ringside. But I'll tell you what, God, I'll tell you what, wrestling over in Japan is real wrestling. I mean, it's it's got a little amateur, a little kickboxing, a little stiffness, a little shootness, and it's my kind of stuff. There you go. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, what's really nice is they respect pro wrestlers. They really do over there. And they take care of them. If, if you're in with the family, you're set up. So are you going to be heading back over to the Orient anytime soon? I hope something happens out here pretty soon uh, that I, I get to go back over there. I've got some dates here and there to uh, go all over the country, Australia, Germany. Uh, you know, so right now I've got two of my great buddies, the lawyers, jumping on uh, a few <laughs> things, you know. <laughs> Don't get yourself in trouble, you know Steve. What I mean. Doc, don't get yourself in any more trouble, man. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> hey, you know what? 
I just got off the phone with Gary Albright, too, man. You know, he's yeah. my uh, last partner over Japan, and uh, he said he's holding my seat in the bus over in Japan, so I'm hoping I'm headed that way. And it looks like you're also going to be making the rounds on the independent circuit here in the United States, and hopefully we'll be able to see you around here sometime soon. Yes, sir, and my, my, my calendar is open right now, and uh, I'll tell you what, I've got my own web page. Uh, it's a long address. I can shoot it over the radio, but if you know Dory Funks, Go right to Dory Funks, and he can push you right on to me. Just jump on the link. And I'm not one of those computer illiterate guys, you know. I'm one of them peckers, not them pipers, you know, guys? Well, I'll tell you what, Doc. We'll, we'll, we'll hook you up to our link here uh, for the wrestling guys. Yeah. And because uh, we do do a lot of work with the independents in the area. Great. And we'll make sure we push some people your way. All right, man. Hey, Doc, we got to go through a break, but it looks like the thing's looking up for you. And uh, as always, uh, I, you know, I, I was a, I've been a huge mark of yours for a long time. So uh, best of luck to you, and hopefully we'll see you back in the ring real, real soon. Hey, guys, I just want to th thank you very much for calling me and letting uh, all the fans know the situation, how Doc's feeling, how, how well he's doing. Matter of fact, I weighed on the scale 249. I've been the lightest since I was in freshman in college. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, I, uh, my uh, body fat's 12%. I don't know if everybody understands that, but I'll tell you what, I look like a million dollars. Hey, God bless you guys, and okay. best wishes for everybody. Hey, God bless you, Doc. Uh, we'll be in touch. We'll put that link on. And any of you independents out there, Dr. Death Steve Williams wants to come to the Miami Valley. So get a hold of him. Contact us at www.ccc, a numeric four theletteru.com, and we'll put a link in there to Dr. Dev. Okay, Doc, thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. All right, Doc, thanks again. A very high Ooh, energy man. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> that man needs to be working. Get rid of some of that. Oh, well, man. what's going on? We got to go to a break. Where? Papa John's. No, Papa John's not here yet. One and a half hours. Is I'm it free now? Their delivery technician is struggling. Isn't that what they call him? Not a delivery man. A delivery technician. Yes, I believe it is. I, All right. I think he lost it. He did. Anyway, you're listening to the wrestling guys with no pizza. Again, we always have problems <laughs> with pizza on Wing, 1410 AM. Get your calls in because when we come back, E stands for excellence and Colin from Beaver Creek, we're going to be with you guys. This is Mark one. the Jobber. We need a new producer. Let's say it. Mark the Jobber. Jobber, what are you doing playing the same promo twice in a row, man? That's bad. Jobber, get on, will you? What's I'm going here, on? I'm here, I'm here. What happened? I don't know. It must be this whole Y2K thing. I you screw up, right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Jobber's just starving because he hasn't got pizza yet. Neither yeah, that's one. it. Give us, a, give us a Papa John's update. It is now 826. We ordered to what, 7? Something like that, yeah. Uh, about, about 10 after 7. Have you talked to the delivery technician? I have talked not to the delivery technician himself, but to someone in the store. And according to her... It was delivered approximately five minutes ago. Where? Oh, it was. I don't know where they delivered it to, but supposedly it's on its way. The, the, the sharpen get, it, I'll tell you what. Does <laughs> the, the boys down at Z have our pizza? The uh, sharpen them steal our pizza? They could have. I'll tell you what. Jobber, get somebody on the line. Get them on the back door line. We want to talk to them. We can't do it over there. No. I want to, I want to know what's well, going on. No, no, no. We can't do it over yes, there. Yes, you can. No, what, you can. What, where are they from? Uh, the, they're at the Kettering location. Jeez, O.P. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> I this think, is getting upsetting. Wait, it's either, it's Marty, either one of the wrestling things. guys. We're I know that. It's the wrestling show. Right. I, I think it's their fault, too, that I played that drop twice. So okay, See? we'll blame them. we got them. two things to complain about. We'll blame them. Absolutely. That's right. Jobber, you, you get our pizzas here. Complain. Okay. Okay, you do that. Take I'm charge. I'm complaining now. Show Thank you. <laughs> let's, all right, let's go to the phone lines because we've got a couple of gentlemen that have been waiting for quite some time. E stands for excellence. You have the wrestling guys. Hello. Hey, hey. E, how you doing? Fine, how are you guys? Good. We, thanks for holding on so long, man. Oh, that's all right. Uh, so, first off, you guys were wanted to know the name of that show that's like American Gladiators. Yeah, what is that? Uh, Battle Dome. Battle Dome. That's it, man. I'll tell you what. There were some people on there the other night that had an attitude. <laughs> you know, they were throwing some people around, and that yeah. was not a gimmick. I mean, it was happening. You're you marching were, for Battle Dome. I'll tell you what. It was bad. There's some Battle dome <laughs> in there, too, that are pretty bad. <laughs> that's why you're marking for. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what else? What's that going on, E? Uh, nothing. I got two questions. Hit it. Uh, one, I was looking all over the site to try to find the Mankind autograph book, and I couldn't find it nowhere. Here's what's going on with that. We talked to his publicist, and I don't even have the book 
because Stickham won't give me his <laughs> to put a picture on there. Our website is being updated. It's going to be in the shopping cart. And when you order it, you give us your name. Mankind will personalize the book to you. And actually, the book now uh, has actually risen to number two on the New York Times bestsellers list. And one of the problems they had, they didn't anticipate the demand for this book, and they quite simply didn't publish enough copies of it. Um, you know, if they had published as many copies as they should have, it would easily be the number one book in and the country. It's not. I'll tell you what, I was in a couple airports over the last week, not there. Oh, you can't um, find it. You just can't find it. And when I called her, I told her I would order 100 copies, 500 copies, whatever it took. Because right now, we probably have 50 or 60 people that have called us, and a lot of people are just waiting for us to get it in. I had people at the store today and several messages on the website. So as soon as I get a copy or a picture of it to put on there, we will start officially taking the order. And then you had Val Venus burn all those copies on Monday night. You, which do you just... believe that? Al's got two. <laughs> He's got the one Rock threw away and the one Mick gave him. I should have got one from him. There you go. But that's what's up, E. All right, and then I got another question. Uh, who's the next person that's going to be in your store? I'll tell you oh, what, geez. buddy. There it is. That's the $50 question. Here's where I see it. Uh, Road Dog is being negotiated with right now. And let me tell everybody this. There's been a big changeover, not just with the Vince Russo uh, leaving and Terry Taylor situation. The entire office has been changing over, and, and some for a positive venue, because one of the gentlemen that was basically trying to take charge of the uh, appearances has been is leaving also actually has left uh, so that should make it a little easier for us during negotiations to bring people in we also would definitely like to bring Kane in because uh, he's, he's my other favorite besides Triple H yeah and I'll tell you what Triple H is, is right now a little out of the spectrum for us even though there's a potential of it happening but I, I see Kane and uh, Road Dog being pretty close all right cool uh, that's all I really have all right, man. Thanks for calling. All right. I hope you guys get your pizza soon. Yeah, oh, we, we, yeah, too, we man. do, it's too, man. It's ugly up here. I'll tell you what. I, one thing I didn't talk about, Tony Atlas stopped by uh, Classic Cards for, uh, for a little while, for about an hour. Went down to Tri-County to our store down there, which is called Fans Choice. Which you just opened, by the way. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. He wowed him. I mean, this <laughs> guy was hilarious. Tony Atlas gave me so many stories of the old days about Andre the Giant, about everybody you can think of. And uh, just what an entertaining guy. And I, I watched him. He wrestled that night for HWA for Heartland and um, put on one tremendous show. The entire crowd was going to USA <laughs> chant, and the place was rabid for him. I'd love to bring him into Dayton. Tony Atlas was great, and I'll tell you what, he had some guns on him. And, and one thing that's great about Tony is, of course, I think most of the people listening saw the MTV special, and he is very honest about, you know, the things that have happened in his life that have been mistaken. And he will tell you right out. I've made mistakes, but he's also learned from those and has turned his life around, and he's really, I think, in some ways, an inspiration for people. Oh, my God. Now, you know, we'll probably talk about that. It's 8.30 now, but maybe next week on yeah. some of the stories and some of the insight that Tony Atlas shared with us. Here's a guy that was making, you know, it said on MTV, he had said 100000 as high as $350,000 a year, wow. years and years ago, that was homeless for an entire year. Well, he went, you know, in 1985, he was Mr. Universe. He won a couple of Mr. USA titles, thus getting his name. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for like a month, he was homeless. Yeah, I mean, one was, year, he told me. I mean, he was, he was literally, you know, for all, all intents and purposes, a bum on the street. Yeah, he said that he had nowhere to go. He lived in a park. He was in Maine. Um, which is, is terrible, you know, anyway, because of the weather fluctuations there. I uh, said at one point he hadn't showered in months. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, it was, and I'm not going to belabor it, but I, I tell you what, what a great guy. Really want to bring him back. Uh, some of the things that we were talking about during the break, we're looking at doing something really big uh, for wrestling in the Miami Valley. So stay tuned to the Wrestling Guys and the Wrestling Guys Hotline at uh, 2850991, and you're going to hear some big news breaking real quickly. There you go. All right. Hey, we got to get to the Colin. Hey, Colin. Colin's been on there forever, man. Colin from Beaver Creek. You got the wrestling guys. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. All right, you? buddy. All right. And okay. Colin, we have to give you an award. Oh, what's that? Uh, right now, you are the first caller that has a real name. <laughs> <laughs> what's well, up, I, man? I know I'm not a wrestler, so I'll eat the real guys. All right. Okay. Uh, what would you think of Hall coming out, or not Hall, but Nash coming out and Pretty sure, wasn't he supposed to be making fun of Vince McMahon? Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. He, he was funny, and, you know, Kevin Nash has a great sense of humor, and, uh, and he was dead on a couple things, especially the part when he was talking about he would guarantee, there's that word again, I guarantee in this very ring, he had Vince down. Yeah. 
Well, Kevin Nash can be in a good mood when you're dating a Nitro girl. <laughs> oh! You're getting personal now. No, I mean, why not, man? I'd be happy, too. <laughs> Any Nitro girls want to date me, I'll be happy for a while with them. Is Mary listening tonight? Or she... <laughs> Actually, Mary is at home ironing right now. I am listening. And I'm probably in some big heat when I get home. I got a, I got a spare bedroom. Baby, that was a joke. I'm just saying it's all radio, and you know how it is. You can sleep in the baby Love room you, tonight, baby. So. All right, man, Colin. Sorry, we have... up now. All right, well, I'm... I'm marking for my wife. Okay. You might predict, predict on what's going to happen soon. By the end of, I'll say February, Nitro's going to be heading the ratings. You think so? Yeah, what's going to happen is, uh, like, on the Internet, on the internet, a lot of people are saying, you know, Nitro sucks. Anybody home? Hey, Marty. Hey, hey. Colin, come respect on. Respect Colin. Respect Colin. I always Colin. respect Colin. Come on, man. By February? Yeah, I'm serious. By February, they'll be ahead because you know, a lot of people are saying Nitro sucks and all that. A lot of people I talked to, they haven't watched it for over a month because, you know, a month ago it did pretty much suck. But things are heating up on Nitro, and it's getting real entertaining. I will say it's definitely improving. It has improved. There's no doubt about it. Have you joined the Love Foundation or something? No, I haven't. But I do have a... No, I'm asking Colin. Oh, Colin, okay. Oh, and uh, oh, what's also going to happen is I think people are going to start to get tired of, you know, The Rock, his old catchphrases. I mean, they're entertaining, but they're going to get old. They're going to leave their... You know, they're, they're going to quit being funny after a while. And people are going to get tired of it. Okay, Colin, you have to do one thing. You have to promise us, though. What's that? That you will call us back in February, whether you're right or wrong, and take whatever comes to you. We will it will praise you if you're right, but if you're wrong, we'll down you on the radio. But you've got to be a man and come on our show and take it. All right, well, for our guys, I have to say, uh, WWF sucks, uh, WWE rules, and fucking guys like Colin, right, take man. care of yourself, man. Thanks for calling, Colin. You know, back. one we're, thing... Should we wait? Oh, uh, yeah, let's wait one All thing. Right, one ahead. thing that uh, may be a problem for the World Wrestling Federation, it looks like, once again, that CBS is uh, talking to Steve Austin about spinning off his Jake Cage character off of Nash Bridge. Good morning. The Wrestling Guys. Hello, Dayton, and welcome to the Fastest 120 Minutes of Wrestling. And if you missed this last week, a lot of callers that called into the radio station and vented their frustration on not having the sound of you know, It was very awkward last Wednesday. Just kind of like, you know, 7 o'clock rolled around and I'm looking at the clock going, dun 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 well, yeah, I didn't know what to do. It threw our whole schedule off. We didn't know what to do. We wanted to start calling people. Sean updated the hotline like three times in a row between 7 and 9. I did. But I'll tell you what, we're back. The World Series is over. And the world of professional wrestling has not stopped, and we have a lot of information for you tonight. A load to get into, and uh, I will say this right now. Apparently, the computers are down here at the station, so we cannot receive email tonight. Um, now, we're, they're working on it, so as soon as we find out they're going to get it fixed, we will pass that along to you. But uh, during the 8 o'clock hour, we will have, as our guest tonight, Dr. Death Steve Williams, who uh, a lot of people know... Uh, was just recently released by the World Wrestling Federation, and uh, one of my favorites, oh, you know, yeah. back in the 80s, he's got a load of ability, and he has a few things on his mind, so well, he's going to join us. You talk about nine. a guy that's having to be on a roller coaster, euphoria, and then depression. I mean, just come off a court case that he basically won. He did. And uh, then to come back and find out that, you know, you're out of a job. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, not that he won't be wrestling. He'll be wrestling somewhere, obviously, because still a talented individual, but... Let's face it, uh, it'd be an interesting interview, and we are trying to get a hold of Al Snow. Uh, we know you you want to lead off with that tonight? Yeah, let's, let's lead, lead off. In case you haven't heard this, we talked about it on the hotline, and, you know, some people just have too much time on their hands, and I've got it here somewhere. Um, but apparently a couple of people... Let you me repeat it. You, you want me to read it? You want to do it? You sure. go right ahead. Got All one. right. <laughs> John Bizio, a company spokesman, and we're talking about Walmart. And if you haven't heard, Walmart has pulled the Al Snow figure off of their shelves, saying that a complaint was filed that makes light of violence against women. Anybody knows Al Snow <laughs> knows this is about as ridiculous as it comes. Uh, the complaint came from a Sabrina Parton. She's an assistant professor of communications at Kennesaw State, wherever the hell that is, and uh, from the manager in Cartersville. Could we imagine that, Cartersville to pull SummerSlam 99 Road Rage Al Snow uh, because of my sons are 6 and 11 and what kind of message would this toy send them about brutalization of women? You made the greatest <laughs> statement today 
that you really didn't know what was it about. And I, I said, I said you know what, it's about time that somebody stood up for the brutalization of mannequins, because that's a thing that's been overlooked for too long in it this has country. Been. I'll tell you what, let's all jump on the bandwagon, Is because the mannequins are, it's, it's bad. Let's get serious for a second. Is this the biggest piece of bull crap you've heard? Uh, it is, and this woman obviously has no life. And she just came out of a closet and realized that there's this head running around, and it's one of the funniest gimmicks around. <laughs> and she has no clue. I mean, the head has never at once been insinuated that it's a, you know, barbaric or Al's ripped a woman's head off. I mean, the idea, and WWF.com posted a response to this on their website, by the way, but the idea is that Al needs somebody to confide into, and this head is it. Master Kim. I'm a video man, Master Cannon. There you go. What's up, man? Uh, <laughs> no, what's the matter with the Zodiac? What's the matter with Zodiac? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Why? And his little girlfriend, Girl Mountain. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, he was uh, calling you out. Yeah, him and his little girlfriend, Girl Mountain. <laughs> oh. These guys have lost their mind. Oh, jeez. So I will that... beat Girl Mountain in five minutes. You, you could beat uh, Man Mountain in five minutes? Yeah. Girl oh, Mountain. Geez. Well, we, we may get that what, challenge, you might you know. have, We're going to be putting something special together, and there may be some challenges coming out. So what you got to do is keep listening, buddy. And uh, obviously you've caught somebody's attention. Yeah. But anyway, I have a question. All right, well. Where is Butch Reed at? Uh, the last I heard about Butch Reed, and it's been a while, um, was that he was on the uh, bull roping circuit, the rodeo circuit, working some things there. But that was a few years ago. That was the last I've heard of Butch Reed. And where is the Patriot? Patriot Del Wilkes. Uh, yeah. Basically, he was released by the WWF after, uh, I think he tore his tricep and had a real tough time coming back from that. He is wrestling some independent shows now and again. Um, I think he's actually back over in Japan. He was real big over in the Orient. So I, last I heard he was doing a couple shows over there. Okay, and one more question. Who is your pick to win the WCW World Heavyweight Title Tournament? Marty, you go first. No, go ahead, because I'm going to take whoever you don't take. Well, okay. Number one, we've heard uh, the storyline that the WCW Mayhem pay-per-view, which is where the finals will take place, will be in Canada, and that Bret Hart will be in the finals. Now, who his opponent will be, you know, that's up in the air. However, there's a rumor going around now that they are going to replay uh, the 1997 Survivor Series ending at that pay-per-view. That, of course, was where, uh, you know, Brett claims he was screwed by Vince McMahon. Um, and they would do so, either Brett would get screwed out in Canada to whoever his opponent is and, you know, still be a fan favorite, or he would turn the table and he would be somehow aligned with Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara, and whoever he's wrestling, um, it would be that kind of ending where they all of a sudden just call for the bell and give Brett the title, and Brett would turn heel and align himself with Russo, Ferrara, Nash, and Hall. Yeah, and so, I love Scott Hall. Scott Hall is like one of the best wrestlers in WCW. I, I, I say Bret Hart's in the finals, but as far as his opponent will be, um, I, I, I don't have the brackets in front of me, but I may have to go with Chris Benoit. Uh, and one more thing, Shawn Michaels is the best wrestler to ever set foot in the ring. You think so? Yeah. Uh, well, there'd be a lot of people who agree with you. There's yes, no sir. doubt about that. Master Ken, thank yeah. you very much for calling. And, and one more thing. Yeah, real quick. WCW sucks. Oh, okay. Uh, thank we'll you, Master We'll end the call Jim. with that. I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a quick break. By the way, Believe it or here. not, it's here. It's here. Keep and it. uh, it's finally one hour and 42 minutes into the show. It made it. And you know what? Jobber still paid the guy. Jobber? No, he didn't. Yes, they they were cool. They gave it to us for free, oh, but Jobber took cool. Oh, very nice. All right. Hey, you're listening to the wrestling guys, Sean Stedham and Marty Adams on 1410 Wing AM. Get on your telephones. we got 15 minutes left. You can call 457-WING, and we'll be right back, Dayton. Dave from Dayton. Welcome back to the wrestling guys on Dayton First, 1410-WING. Sean Stedham along with Marty Adams. And back after a week off, and uh, we want to thank Papa John. We gave him some grief over the air, but still excellent pizza. They got it here, and uh, definitely, if you want pizza, give those guys a call because they do have some excellent stuff, especially this garlic sauce. It's very cool there. Anyway, let's go to the phone lines. we got Dave on the line. Dave, welcome to the Wrestling Guys. Dave, one. This is Greg. Greg, okay. Jobber, what the hell are you doing? Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, Greg, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing good. Good. What's up? questions for you. First of all, I got this Bret Hart album in uh, in my hand right now. How is that? It's a pretty good album. It's got Rob Zombie and a lot of other big names. We, we I mentioned it on the on our hotline yeah. that uh, it's in the stores now. The 
soundtrack to the Bret Hart Wrestling with Shadows documentary. You can pick up a CD to it. And I think, who else is on? Brian Adams is on there, Rob Zombie, um, somebody else. A few groups I haven't heard of. Yeah. Like Canadian or something. I, and I know we got a lot of Bret Hart fans that are listening, Jesse. And uh, so I know that they're out there uh, getting the uh, CD as well. Anyways, what I was wondering is, how is Vince McMahon ending up on the cover of this when, I mean, face those two hate each other and, I mean, he's... How does Vince, I, you, you've lost me a little bit, how does Vince... Well, he's on the cover of it in the background of Bret Hart and... Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're getting how at. How is he not getting sued or royal, mm -hmm. having to pay royalties? Well, you have to understand is that when that documentary was made, um, you know, Brett, of course, was in the World Wrestling Federation, and, uh, you know, you get to see the documentary of Vince coming out with a nice black eye. Um, and Vince is on the cover of the, the, the documentary out in stores. Vince is on the box. So I think they just took the cover from the video box, excuse me, and that's what they made for the uh, cover of the CD. Okay, yeah, my other thing then was, um, just to the person before, I'd have to say that Shawn Michaels sucks. I'm a Bret Hart fan. <laughs> Um, I don't think you can have, I don't think you can like both. Either you're a Shawn Michaels fan or a Bret Hart fan. With those two, it's one or the other. I used to. I think WCW's going big now that they got Bret Hart. He's my prediction to win the thing, but I don't really think that anybody will boo Bret Hart again after some of the tragedies that he's had. And yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, um, you know, with, of course, the Owen and everything. So we'll see, you know, what happens. Yeah, Greg, you're really going out on a limb there. Predicted Bret Hart. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> he's one of my favorites. I uh, guess I probably hope to meet him sometime if you can. Work Marty? No, I don't, man. <laughs> it's, uh, you know what? We had him set up, too. We took him up to Lima, did an appearance for us in Lima. And uh, maybe we'll get a call. Maybe we'll get Bret Hart and give him a call. Let him know there's a lot of his fans in the area who would like to get him over. We may do that. Yeah, we'll chance, Marty, is there a chance that in your store you have a Sandman autograph? Uh, actually, no, but I know we'll be able to get him now pretty readily with him being back in ECW. I know we did just get in some today, uh, a lot of different ECW ones, talk to Larry, but uh, I don't have any at this point, I know. Okay, yeah, I was had a chance to, um, he climbed, like, right up there where we were sitting and everything, got his beer on me and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a collected item now, man, don't wash that shirt. <laughs> All right, Greg, well, we appreciate you calling, buddy. Thanks. All Thank right, you. thanks for calling the wrestling guys. Let's go to the hotline again, and it's uh, Josh from Dayton. You're with the wrestling guys. Hey, guys. Hey, Josh. Uh, i got a couple of ECW questions for you. Oh, we'll do what we can. Actually, i got a question and a comment. Okay. First comment on. Is just me or is Raven looking like, is Raven looking like Jim Morrison? Is Raven looking like Jim Morrison? Uh, do you think he does? <laughs> a little bit, yes, a little bit. And, um, that was about Dream... Anymore. Okay. Is, does he really have like a bad back? Yes, he does. Because uh, I was wondering, because I see him take some like, serious bumps to his back and stuff. And and every time he does that, his doctors and friends seem cringe, because that that is a very serious situation. Tommy Dreamer, he was on this program, um, talking about how he had the herniated disc, and he didn't know if he was ever going to wrestle again. But as this is happening, you have ECW now with the national exposure on TNN and, uh, you know, doing wonderful business. You know, we talk about the ratings, but, you know, give them time and they're going to go up. Uh, you know, to prove exactly how big the TNN deal is, the last ECW pay-per-view equaled the same, got the same buy rate as the last WCW pay-per-view. Right. So the TNN deal is making, you know, doing wonders. But, you know, you have a situation where Tommy Dreamer shouldn't be in the ring, but this is also his opportunity to really make it big. And he's just lucky because his girlfriend, Francine, is very acrobatic. And she can take good care of him. Yes. I bet. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. All right, man. Thanks for calling. 457-W-I-N-G. You yeah. know, one guy that had that same situation, uh, not to go off on tangible, was Paul Orndorff. Uh, back in 86, with the feud with Hulk Hogan, he had some nerve damage in his left arm. And he didn't take the time off that he needed to. And if you ever saw Paul Orndorff, you know, what, during his last time with WCW, he wore that elbow pad over his bicep. If you ever saw him take that off, his left arm, I, I believe it was his left arm, is probably, you know, two or three times smaller than his right one because of that nerve damage. I'll tell you what, what a great performer Paul Orndorff was in oh, his day. Tremendous, tremendous. I used to love him. Well, back to the hot lines, and Dustin from Kettering, you're with the wrestling guys. Hi, guys, how you doing? Good, Good buddy. I got two questions. One is, uh, when are we going to see Head again? Um, <laughs> you may not, and we don't want to, you know, go into a lot, but, uh, 
Well, hell, I'll throw it out there. There's a rumor that Al may be turning heel, and it's true. You and your, don't talk about Al. Anyway, there's a rumor he may be turning heel, and uh, we may not be seeing head for quite some time. No. And my but, but, I will say this, with the Walmart controversy, I wouldn't be surprised if they change their mind and you see head back next week. <laughs> I hope so. And my second question is, do you ever think Goldberg will win a match, like, without you being, or lose a match without, like, you, a weapon being used or being jumped? Sure he will. Eventually, yeah. In one of these days, but not in our near future. Yeah. Because I think it's, it's kind of old, like a Superman thing. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's who Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara say is going to be their man. And uh, until, you know, everybody in this business has a time where they have to do a job to somebody. And um, this time will come. Okay, thanks. All right, All right thank buddy, you for calling. Yep. Hey, one of your favorites and ours, longtime Wrestling Guys listener, Hotline listener, Good and man. the rep from Riverside. Hey, Hi, rep. Wrestling guys. How you going? How's it doing there, buddy? All Good, right, rep. How are you doing? I'm just hanging in there. Good. What's up? Uh, not too much. I want to know who is really behind hitting Elizabeth with the guitar. Oh, geez. Well, they're making it look like it was uh, Jeff Jarrett, but uh, who knows what kind of spin. Who do you think did it? I'd say it might be, well, uh, I think it might be Buff. Buff Bagwell? Yeah, because he's almost in a feud with Jarrett anyway. Could be. Maybe he's mm -hmm. trying to, uh, you know, what, what's the word I'm going to look for? Uh, it's such a common word. Uh, he's trying to set up Jarrett? Yeah. Okay. That's, That's a good thought. That could be. Yeah. And another thing I was talking to you about, that Kane and Tori the other day. Right. I want to get back with you on the hotline and leave you. It's a pretty long story, but I'm going to leave you another one that I got cooking up in my brain. Uh-oh. It's something like the Phantom of the Opera deal where we might get to see Kane's face just for a split second. You think so, huh? That, that, you know, that'd be a good storyline. Maybe like the, the from the Phantom of the Opera, the beauty of Tori makes yeah. Kane take off his mask. Yeah, well, she takes it off for him just for a split second. You know? Wow. You remember a few years ago in the WWF when George Ann was still supposed to have all these doctors come in to see him that Blue Albano had come in? Yep. Well, we need some kind of a... Uh, face doctors come in and fix uh, Kane up, let him go back to being Jacob again. Could be a very interesting I'll situation. I'll tell you what, I like it. Not bad. Yeah, you're thinking too hard, man. But you know what? Then you lose out on the merchandising from the mask sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. We'll put in a good word for you. I hope so. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, thank you. All right, man. You know, it looks like that, uh, by the way, speaking of Vince, he will be the head TV writer now for the WWF. He is going to uh, take that responsibility solely on himself and He's going to use uh, Kevin Kelly and Terry Taylor and some others as his assistants, but Vince will be the man writing the storylines for the World Wrestling okay, Federation. So who, are you, who are you going to holler at when it doesn't go good? You go to the I'm ball. mad at you. I'm <laughs> mad. I mean, I'm mad at myself. I mean, Jesus, I'm it, confused. One other thing a lot of people have been calling, uh, wondering about on our hotline is uh, what is happening with Dustin Runnels. It looks like they're going to repackage him once again. Now, they're doing away with that boogeyman-type character he was going to have. And uh, we don't know exactly how he's going to come back or when, but uh, you're not going to see him. You know what the name of that character was? I don't know if you ever got that. What? Seven. And it was spelled with the numeral seven in E-V-E-N. That I'll was, was going to be the character. I've never seen a guy repackaged so many times and hasn't never come out yet. <laughs> what do we do with him? You know, Nothing. And Just what's sad is he has enough ability, I think, where he doesn't have to be a packaged, you know, character like Seven or Goldust or whatever. I mean... Yeah, I remember, he came out, you know, back in the 80s. He's goofy. He's, he's got enough ability. He should just be Dustin Rhodes. Have you ever met Dustin Rhodes? Uh, one time briefly. Did he talk? He's a little, he is a little bizarre. Yes, he is. He is a, he is a little bizarre. I can tell you, every time, there. and I mean, no, no, no disrespect to Dustin Rhodes. I don't know him that well. Every time you go to the matches, and Terry's there, which at the time mm -hmm. was his wife, he's out in his car you know you normally the guys will park a lot of times inside he always parked inside mm -hmm. and he's listening to the radio and he's not communicating or talking with anybody really by himself i mean he's a guy who is another one who's had a lot of personal issues um over the last few years oh yeah he and dusty were estranged for a while and then of course the uh divorce from uh, his wife and he's had a roller coaster ride himself well, that's why they keep repackaging him he doesn't know who he is from week to week Go back to the phone line, 457-WING, who do we got? The head of the Love Foundation, not Ooh. the love man, but his bodyguard, Earn Dog. Earn Dog, you finally got on the program. Yes. How you doing? Pretty good. Earn Dog now, he calls us every week saying this is the week he's going to get on. He never gets through, but tonight is your night. It's so long to get on, it took me like 
I started listening back in July, and I've never hardly got on. This is the first time. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I don't You're know, the man. I don't know if we have a prize for you, but... Um, you don't have to tell me that I'm the man for me to know that I am the man. Okay. Oh, gee, oh, gee. Well, the man is not the man. He thinks he's a man, but I am the real man. Now, you called the hotline, and you have put together uh, a newsletter, right? Yes. Okay, and you're, you're sending Marty and I a copy, right? Yes, okay. he's in the mail right now. Okay, good. And if people want to get the Love Foundation newsletter, how do they get that? Well, to get the Love Foundation newsletter, you write to the Love Foundation headquarters at 8692 Chamberlain Road, Carlisle, Ohio, 45005. Chamberlain okay. Road. Chamberlain Road. Isn't that out near the Flying Saucer? It, it's not me. <laughs> Earned dog not in the saucer. No. And for those of you who don't know, there is a guy who built a house that looks like a flying saucer in Carlisle. So, <laughs> kind, kind of, it, I'm sure you've seen it, Earned dog. Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. Anyway, um, what's up? Well, for first of all, I got to say I think those two guys are on crack, but let's not get into that. Which two guys? Uh, the guys who live in the flying saucer. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> all right. I have a question. Why? Why exactly is the Ultimate Warrior going to court with the WWF? Um, over contract, merchandising, that kind of stuff. Oh, because when he was in the WCW, he just went by the Warrior, and I thought that he was wanting full rights to the name, the Ultimate Warrior. That, that's part of it, too. Uh, there's, yeah. there's a whole lot of it involved. His uh, The way he left the World Wrestling Federation wasn't the most amicable. Um, there was, I guess his dad was sick at the time, and yeah. he kind of took off and didn't tell anybody, so um, there's a lot of bad blood there, and, uh, you know, they're going to fight it out in court, and then... After that, uh, we could see him either back in WCW or even maybe for a short run in ECW. Yeah, because I heard that him and uh, Vince Russo are buddy buddy. Yeah, know? they they are, they supposedly have a good working relationship. Yeah. Also, uh, are they going to give him that Norman Smiley big wiggle dude to push or something? He's uh, a hardcore man. Apparently, yes. That's what I've heard, Marty. I don't yeah, that's what it seems like. Even though he was released, <laughs> he had a nasty nasty gash in his shoulder. Did you yeah. see that Monday night? Yeah, it does appear that way, though. The big wiggle is still wiggling. <laughs> it could be the next hardcore uh, champion or whatever. What they're going to do with that. It says a lot for their hardcore division, but okay. <laughs> well, All you, right, you man. waited 119 uh, minutes into the show before you bashed. Yeah, that's right. Earn Dog, thanks for calling, man. All right. All right, buddy. Take care. Hey, we got a couple callers. We're going to try to get them in. Sean from Hubert Heights. You're on the wrestling guys. Yeah, hello. How Good. you doing, Sean? How you guys doing? Good. Good let me, let me come in, commend you on your name. It's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Double S, Sean Stidham. There you go. Yeah, well, uh, I just want to say this is the first time I've listened to the show, and the first time I called, and I got right in. Well, <laughs> you you are among the few. You are, you are, you are among the few that have not listened to yeah. our show. Well, That's well, what I mean. Hopefully hopefully you played the lottery today, then. Oh, not quite. Okay, what, what's up? But, uh, I just want to say I listened to the hotline for about a couple weeks now, and I, uh, like it, you know? And I call most of the other hotlines, too. And uh, I got a, a wrestling question, too. I want to know what you guys think is the, the best pay-per-view ever. Uh, best pay-per-view ever? Um, I've always said Starcade 85 was my favorite, but, uh, you know, Marty, I don't know about you. Was that with Ric Flair? Uh, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes in the main event, Steel Cage match, had the Magnum TA, Tully Blanchard. That was a match. great day. You know what? There's so many, but, I mean, you're right. And I got to tell you something. Halloween Havoc, not a bad pay-per-view. That wasn't bad either. It, you know, because of what's been going on, but it was it was a pretty good one. You no, know, we, we got to run, but I'll say real quick, I think the older pay-per-views from the 80s and early 90s, you didn't have a pay-per-view every month, and that's why I think that sometimes oh, yeah. the ones from the past, your WrestleMania 3s and such, are always the ones that people think were the most special. No doubt about it. Dave, thanks a lot, Sean. Okay. Sean, thanks for calling. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, I want to say uh, sorry to the Rhino, Atomic Rhino from UCW was on hold. Oh, Rhino, you want to talk to the wrestling guys, buddy, you better get your calls in early. Uh, just couldn't do it. I want to thank everybody uh, on the show tonight. Of course, I want to thank uh, Al Snow. I want to thank uh, Dr. Death, Steve William. Also, Big Daddy Raj Cox for straightening out the Atlas situation. Everybody that called in tonight, I want to thank THQ with the trivia question of the week. Don't forget, every single day you can call the Wrestling Guys hotline for the latest in wrestling news at 285-0991. 285-0991. There you go. You can get it. You got the calendar events. It is updated. And you have the option three, WWF SmackDown. Don't do it, though. Results. Wait till Thursday. <laughs> see it. And Dayton, we want to thank you. You've been listening to the Wrestling Guys. Sean Stedham and Marty Adams on 1410 Wing AM. Good night, Dayton to the wrestling guys and uh, we got a lot to talk about just during the break we're talking about this Sunday Survivor Series. One thing that's really cool about this Sunday's pay-per-view is uh, they're going back a little bit to the classic Survivor Series style format where you have two four-man teams going at it and then 
mint, you know, once you lose, you get eliminated and you break it down that way. Um, card looks like this. This was officially released by the World Wrestling Federation. Kurt Angle taking on Sean Stasiak. And uh, I don't know about this Kurt Angle guy. That I'm know. not sure where that's going, but obviously somewhere. Yes. One fall sudden death match. Ivory, Jacqueline, Luna, and Terry taking on Tori, Deborah, Mula, and Mae Young. Ooh, baby, don't wait. let them puppies run. <laughs> see, did, did, did you, did you, I know you didn't see this. Regis and Kathy Lee this morning. You told me. Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, was um, the guest. And Kathy Lee mentioned, oh, and you have a new girlfriend. Who is she? And he goes, uh, well, her name's Deborah. Really not wanting to, you know, make it... Most people know, but not one to really... Just keeping kayfabe. Keeping kayfabe. And all of a sudden, well, let's bring her out. And they pan the camera over to Deborah, and she's just standing there like, um, okay, hi. So. I'm sure they probably heard a little bit about that, too. I'm sure the, they will. In the office. They will. Tag team title match this Sunday. Mankind and Al Snow try to get the belt back from the New Age Outlaws. Then begins the Survivor Series eight-man elimination matches. Godfather, D'Lo Brown, and the Headbangers taking on the Acrolytes and the Dudley Boys. Then you've got Val Venus, Mark Henry, Gangrel, and Steve Blackman. How's that for a team? Taking on the British Bulldog and the Mean Street Posse. <laughs> Val Venus, Mark Henry, Gangrel, and Steve Blackman. What, how they got those four together? I don't know. <laughs> hey, are you four doing anything this afternoon? We're going to make you a team. <laughs> Boss Man teams up with Prince Albert, Viscera, and Midian to take on the Big Show, Taka, Funaki, and the Blue Meanie. You know what? Meanie is hanging in, man. Every God's time you're right as demise, he's down... And, you know, I read an article somewhere, I don't know if it was, uh, I forget what magazine right now, but it said Blue Meanie looks like the younger brother of Blue Meanie. He's lost so much he weight. He tie bowed his ass off, I'm <laughs> telling you, man. My boy cut it and did it quick and worked hard. you got to give the kid credit. Then uh, another eight-man elimination match, the Hollies teaming up with Too Much to take on Edge, Christian, and the Hardys. Uh, Xbox then takes on Kane in a singles match. Then the match we talked about earlier, Intercontinental title on the line. Y2J, Chris Jericho taking on China. I, Jericho's going to do it. Uh, Jericho, are you going on the record again? I never again. No, go <laughs> ahead. Put it out on the machete, man. Triple Let's threat go. match in your main event for the WWF title. Vince McMahon, your special guest referee. Triple H defends against Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. I've got a hunch it's going to be The Rock. You know what? I, I have to agree with you, but what a large card. I mean, big oh, card. Huge. Everybody, everybody, every worker is damn near working. Uh, should be great. Detroit's a hell of a wrestling town. Um, I know there's a lot going on, and I uh, can't wait to be up there. You want to go up with me? I might. I might. I think hey, you ought to come what, up. What's your opinion of um, the whole Boss Man Big Show storyline? I don't like it. Thank you. I never <laughs> did like it, and I'm not in for those types of work. You know, some things, you know, in wrestling, I understand the shock value of what the World Wrestling Federation tries to do, but... Uh, that one hits a little bit too close to home, and um, I think uh, everybody that listens to this show one time maybe has lost somebody to cancer or seen somebody or something like that. This one's just tasty, yeah. and it, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but tomorrow night on SmackDown, it gets worse. It and gets worse. I'll tell you what, we, you know what, we talk a lot, we talk, and I think, you know, depending on who has a pay-per-view that week and who is doing what, we try to break the time up evenly among the federations. We probably give ECW as much time as any other wrestling talk show in the country. Right. Uh, but I'll tell you what, at that type of thing, it, there's no room for it. On the other end, you know, WCW, I think, is going towards a more risque look or appearance about them. But on that, I think that you, you have a tendency to alienate people. You, you, you're, the, uh, you're the callers. You let us know what you think about it. Exactly. And, you know, some people um, have said this week, I know Raj Cox over on the ECW hotline did a uh, commentary on it that uh, sometimes wrestling angles are now a little bit too adult. You've had the situation this past Monday with uh, DX and Stephanie McMahon. You know, in some cases, you know, the World Wrestling Federation has been as public as possible as saying it's really not about wrestling anymore. It's about entertainment. It's about storylines. You know, and they did run that, you know, close to 11 o'clock. And that storyline isn't anything different than what you see on NYPD Blue or, you know, a host of other different television shows. Hell, Friends on Thursday night on uh, NBC comes on 8 o'clock, and I think every episode has always been about sex with that show. When is that on again? 8 o'clock, Marty. I think it's on syndication what, like at 7 o'clock. Uh, every night you can watch it in syndication. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, set your VCR. All right. Set your TiVo for that. Anyway. Buff the jobber's in the house. Yes, he is. Hey, but anyway, my, <laughs> the man. God bless you. 
anyway, my point is, you know, sometimes the angles you go, okay, it's a storyline, it's fun, uh, it's okay. But the cancer thing, that's just paper. No that's doubt my about opinion. it. Hey, I think your opinion's well taken. Anybody wants to talk about that, you can do it. And we're going to go to the phone lines. And Kid Chuck, you're with the wrestling guys. Wait, Jobber's still in here, so we can't go to the phone. Yeah, set. we're doing it. Jobber, get the hell back to your studio. Kid Chuck, just talk to yourself, because <laughs> Jobber's in here, man. Jobber's in here getting pizza, so how much do we pay Jobber? Okay, Kid Chuck, yeah, I never thought, wow. <laughs> Kid Chuck, don't be so opinionated, man. Kid Chuck, are you there? Yeah, hey, what's up? Hey, Not much, what's going? up, man? I'd just like to uh, reiterate the fact that I thought November November was an unbelievable pay-per-view. Oh, it was incredible. It was so well done. You know, in ECW, at the very beginning of the show, they did have some production glitches, but uh, as some other people pointed out, they don't have the budget yet that WCW and the WWF has uh, to spend on pay-per-view, so you have to forgive them in some aspects on that, but the action in between the ropes was incredible. I mean, as far as action from beginning to end, it's WWF can't stack up, and they have the best pay-per-views, both two, in the business. You know, you know, the reason I think that people like ECW pay-per-views so well, you only get them every other month, and I think it, you, they have they build up storylines a little longer, and so there's more anticipation to see these matches, where, you know, in the WWF, you see Austin Rock or Triple H in some form every month and every Monday night. Well, you, you made a good point here a couple weeks ago when you said, when we were younger, there was WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. You didn't have all these pay-per-views once in a month. You didn't have all the different federations coming at you over and over. And I'll tell you what, man, I remember I would have done anything to be able to attend a WrestleMania. Well, yeah, it really, you know, if you want to go back, and start, it started with Starcade in the NWA. Absolutely. You know, it was the Thanksgiving tradition. And every year, Starcade was the show. And at the time, pay-per-view wasn't available. And this goes back, and some people have probably never heard of closed-circuit television. I know you and I have. Unfortunately, But yes. you, used to go to, you used to go to the Cincinnati Gardens or out to Hera, and they had giant theater-type screens, and you paid 10 or 15 bucks a ticket, and that's how you watch boxing and wrestling and everything else. You went to an arena and sat with guys and watched TV, basically. How old are you, kid, Chuck? I'm just 18. Okay. okay. Well, you don't, you don't know what closed-circuit television was. <laughs> he heard about it in history. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think... You know, when you have a pay-per-view every month, it loses its romanticism. Um, I also had a question about, okay, Jim Cornette is still with WWF, right? Yeah, that right. is correct. Well, with Terry Taylor being gone, do you think we'll start seeing Jim Cornette on TV again? Doing no. Doing things Terry Taylor was doing? No. Jimmy's down working on the developmental group. Actually, you mentioned it, uh, the Hardy Boys or somebody's there potentially. Yeah, tonight. Jim Russell, or Jim Russell, mm -hmm. God, please, no. Uh, Jim works with, is it the Ohio Valley Wrestling right. that he works with? He's and in Louisville. He's only a couple hours from here. But that's a developmental group for the World Wrestling Federation. They send uh, their up-and-comers there to get trained and to uh, get experience in the ring and working in front of crowds and such. And that's what Jim loves to do. He does that along with Danny Davis down there. And uh, actually tonight they have a show in Louisville and the Hardy Boys are coming in to wrestle a ladder match um, against whoever their tag team champions are. So that's all, that ought to be a good one. Um, and when did you say those Taz videos are going to start running, the little promos? I was told they're going to start running after Survivor Series, so we should start, we should start seeing them this Monday. Awesome. And uh, I think I heard Rath, I heard about the release of WCW. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that he wouldn't sign with WWF because I think he'd be a better fit in ECW. I do too. And so I do I. A, a Rhino Rath feud would be amazing. I do. I'm excited about James Vandenberg hopefully getting another shot at managing because I just think he has a lot of potential. Uh, that wasn't used in WCW. Surprise, surprise, WCW not using potential. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited about Raz going to ECW too. Ten, seven, ten. Yeah. They've been lost. They are all over the Miami Valley and they can't find the wing radio yeah, I don't. Pager. I don't think we can blame Dana for this one. No, but I mean, once again, Dana. I'm not